Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Shiro Clicks. This episode, we're going to be talking about some Ten of Swords OP kit figures. We're going to be talking about the brand new schedule that was released for Worlds 2022 and answer some listener questions. This is episode 427. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. Now, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how would six how people it? think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some Let's attack him. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. I'm your sexy ranch and co host, Calder Ness. I forgot to say that. Wild. I mean, like always in the studio, though, is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah. It's me. It's him. Uh, Get out. Yeah. <laughs> What you, a dude, what a guy. you will not believe the mm -hmm. things I did not do this week. Oh, baby. Well, now is your time to tell me and what made us happy. <laughs> or yeah, something, whatever you're We'll, we'll do. jump whatever into what made say. us happy. Um, yeah. I will say, for anyone that uh, won something from the YouTube giveaway, we are oh, yeah. getting around to it. It's just been kind of a hectic week getting everything scheduled. Still haven't gotten all of the addresses from everyone that won stuff right. in the giveaway so it'd be super cool if your name was mentioned in either our facebook post or youtube post at this point we might have to do another one because yeah we're just missing to update it those names. and get it your guys's like feet just to like refresh yeah if, or maybe you missed it the first time needed to pop up again yeah be necessary yeah didn't help that like last week i couldn't go out in public for reasons um I, and then this week I'm just I'm just lazy. Uh, so no, uh, what made me happy this week though is I finally got my ID sent to me in the mail. So oh yeah, yeah, it was I had that paper <laughs> for, for a like while. two weeks. I had uh, a little like slip of paper that was like, yes, you are a human that resides in this human atmosphere. Um, both of my previous IDs were voided, and so I have never been like ID'd when like once one thing would require it i haven't been id'd like ma the majority of the time in the last three or four years like nine out of ten times i don't get id'd as soon as the dmv takes away my driver license driver's licenses um because i had two for a while as soon as they take those away and void them and give me a paper replacement suddenly everyone wants to see it they're like can i see your id and i'm like oh so the guy like the quick shop was like, oh, I'll just scan your ID real quick. And I was like, ah, you can't scan it. It's a paper one. And he's like, oh, I can scan that. And I like unfold it. And he's like, oh, I can't scan it. And I was like, yeah. Um, I don't know what to do with it. Um, like, burr. it feels it yeah. feels awkward because everyone else's ID is you know, like card size. It's you know, it's you've seen a right. HeroClix card. It's like that size. It's tiny. It's a it's an ID card. Um. Yeah. And mine is literally a nine by eleven <laughs> sheet of paper that I have to like unfurl, <laughs> and then they have to look at it as if like they're reading some sort of manuscript from like the sixteen hundreds, trying to decipher all of like the stuff. And I had my two voided IDs with me. I was like, well, you can like reference these because they have my picture on them. The paper one didn't, but yeah, I didn't get turned down. It was just uh, or turned away. It was just a long process of dealing with it's that awkward for everybody involved but yeah i'm officially um a commercial driver now previously oh man, what a guy. i was just a commercial driver on the lam but now i i can officially commercial drive your goods somewhere isn't oh, that fun i won't do it even if you pay me <laughs> but i can technically do it according to the government <laughs> so what a hey. long, awful process, by the way. Man, like the DMV, yeah. I, I don't know how it is everywhere. We finally got the, um, like, robo version of, like, the DMV person, where if you have an appointment, you can go up to it and type in your stuff. You type in your stuff, it prints out a ticket, and then you just wait. 
previously you had to like wait in line, go up to the person, right. and be like, you have to fill out this form. And then you had to get back in line, fill out that form. Because you can't get the form until you get to the person, which is odd to me that they don't just have the forms it's like strange. ready. Uh, but, yeah. but then you get to the person, they like check it, and they like ask you all the questions that are already on the form. And I'm like, I filled it out so that this this whole interaction didn't have to happen. And then they make you wait. And, like, luckily for, like, there's not a lot of commercial driver licenses, like, popping out. So you're almost always, like, front of the queue. There's, like, one person specifically that's going to, like, test you or whatever. So that's nice. But you still have to sit in the DMV for, like, 40 minutes. And then the actual, like, driving test was mm, two and a half hours. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. What? I did not I did not realize it was going to be so long. So the Ugh. one day it was like 105 degrees and the lady that was testing me was like, "Do you want to water or anything?" and I was like, "No, I'll be fine." And then it's like 2 hours in and I'm like, "I use that water right about I, now. I could really use a drink of water." I wouldn't mind. Like yeah. at this point, you know. Um but no, that's what made me happy. Finally got my ID. Uh there's some other like random odds and ends. Uh, had some meatball from uh, Omaha Meatball. <laughs> and, uh, like the good old meatballs are they're good. Here's they're not the bad. weird Simian food of yeah. the meat. Perfect. They just they're just the uh, they're known for their meatball, and that wasn't too bad. Um, also had like a basically their one of their starters was like a Philly, but instead of any meat peppers ingredients whatsoever it was just the cheese and mushrooms and bread oh and that was like one why? of the starters so i was like oh, yeah like the the i'll take the fukai fo- uh, fungi bread and they're like oh yes the, the I fungi, know, fungi. fungi and i was like sure and then it comes out and the, the fungi is actually just mushroom and the other part was just the bread with cheese and uh it was good. It was just not. That's not. That's not really a starter. That's just a bad sandwich. You can't just make like yeah. half a sandwich and be like, "This is a starter." Like, here's a grilled cheese. We forgot to grill it. That's called a starter. A cold a starter. cheese sandwich. Almost there. <laughs> but no. Uh, that's basically what made me happy. Uh, nice. Even though I I don't plan on using it professionally, uh, I finally got that. Um, so now I have. A motorcycle endorsement, my lack of endorsement due to my bad vision, which is like an anti-endorsement, and uh, mm-hmm. then I can mm-hmm. drive hazardous chemicals and the things ooh, that are heavy. Ooh, terrifying. Yeah. Trying. Yeah. Oof, duh. Well, I'm glad to hear it. It's in capable hands, even if those hands don't want to be. <laughs> That's it's good. <laughs> it's good enough. Um. Yeah. What made me happy this week? Pretty, pretty easy. Uh, I kind of mentioned it last week. I took a trip to New York. That sounds excited. Great. And then we're on to oh. the news, right? Yep, time for news. Anyway, <laughs> nothing to talk about. Nothing really important. Calder went uh, to New York. Over. The end. The end. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I will. I won't talk too crazy long about it. But it was great. It was really fun. I had a great no, time. Let's hear, about I, it. Let's, hear I, let's hear every detail. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you flew in, right? I flew into Newark. You drew E W A R K. Drove to Iowa to fly out. Yes. So I, my sister goes to school in Ames, Iowa. So we wanted her to come with us to New York. I drove down to Ames, and then we drove an extra forty miles uh, to Des Moines, Iowa, and that's when we flew to New York. So that's a like seven-hour drive to the airport. Um, Des Moines is a good airport to fly out of, though. As far as yeah, it was. As far as like this kind of area goes, good airport to fly out, fly out of. Yeah, like there's no, uh, there's no kerfuffle. Uh, parked my car next to the the big M in the parking lot, and then was sad when I realized I walked past the K row, and there was a spot by the K row, and I was like, ah. it would have been so easy to remember. But I still remember, I still remember, I still got it. Yeah, but we got there. And then we got on the subway from Newark. It's actually a train. It literally had a guy. Like Polar Express guy with a little hat and one of those little puncher things, like punched Tom our train Hanks, ticket. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, what? That was great! I've never been on a train before." And I was like, "This is so dope." And then you turn around and he's also the engineer. 
You turn yeah, around yeah. And he's like also the yeah, coal he, shoveler. And he starts like narrating and everything. It's it's <laughs> it's pretty wild. You forgot your yeah. hot cocoa, Mister Ness, and like, how did <laughs> yeah. you know my name? Yeah, it was and so magical. You have no idea. Dude. Uh, and then I look at my ticket, and it's actually in the shape of a Christmas tree uh, with hole punches <laughs> in it. It's pretty. It was pretty incredible. Uh, no, and then we we this get time to New York. Year, the Christmas tree <laughs> in the middle of Des Moines. Good. <laughs> no, the train. No, the train was in New New Work, New Jersey. Oh, the train okay. Manhattan. For New some York. reason, I That's thought this was the at the airport. Was. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is already. We've already gotten on the flight. On the flight there, quick shout out to the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. I ended up buying it for Switch. For the Shredder's flight. Return. Oh, Shredder's Return. Yeah, Shredder's Revenge. Shredder's Return. Shredder's Revenge. Whatever one's yeah. not the Hero Click set. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's and like it's so fun. New version of it with new characters and multiplayer capability, right. online capability. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but it was dope. It made the flight go by super, super fast. And so we get to, finally to Manhattan, and we just see the first like pizza place we see. Great, great. It was actually really good pizza. Eight dollars a slice. Big slices though. So I was like, nah. One in Rome. One in New York. Um, no, but the cool thing we did. I was like, a highlight of every day is we decided we would go see a Broadway show every single night. And on one day, we actually saw two, which is insane. So, first night, we saw Play That Goes Wrong. This is hilarious, especially if you've been in a theater production before, about people, like, dropping lines. I mean, it might sound awful, but it's comically hilarious. It has this Did part show the must go on. No matter, oh, the... We were taking bets on like what pieces of the set would fall down, and a ton of them did. Like, there's this part where That's there's fun. like a an outcropping with a single pole holding it up. I'm like, oh, they're gonna hit that pole, and that entire platform is just all. And, and sure enough, it did. And I was like, ah, oh, beautiful. That's chaotic. I love it. And of course, there's a person up there when he knocks the pole down. So that person like holding on for dear life, and it's probably all safe, like actually backstage wise. Sure. It's not like but... Charlie Chaplin's version of no. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just, just he was off incredibly building. lucky and talented. Yeah, clearly that's all. That's all it was. It was just very, very lucky, very talented uh, guy to not uh, get hit by a train, fall off the building. You know, he meets up with the little <laughs> moving I beams at the perfect point. It's great. It's really cool. Uh, no, it's so, like the set totally falls apart. People forget their lines. Um, this one dude is like, you know, they have to drink something on show. He's like, I could really use a scotch and gets to grab scotch and he walks out and he has like paint thinner which is probably which is really just water but the bottle says paint thinner so it's hilarious every time like the characters drink it and they instantly spit it out like oh that you know it's uh it was a great show it was an awesome show i love the clips of different like comedy groups and like the original comedy group of the play that goes wrong somewhere on youtube and they're really funny i recommend them highly uh, and this cast was amazing and i loved it and then we saw Statue of Liberty the next day. Loved it. You know, tear to my eye. Lady Liberty, only girl for me. She's she's great. Love her. Uh, but yeah, seriously, it was really cool seeing Statue of Liberty. A lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know why I thought it would be so big. But it's still, it's still huge. But then when you look at it on the skyline of New York, and you just see how much taller all the buildings are, you're like, oh. Yeah. Old stuff in scale. Old stuff shrinks over time because yeah, it shrinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. New it's the it was the water. The water actually. Say, this is like a complete side tangent. So, uh, I will say yeah. I'm sad that like we've entered an era where we no longer do like big impressive things for like just the sake of doing it. Like we don't do giant yeah. statues anymore. We don't do giant like monuments anymore. It's always like. You know, like way back when whoa, we whoa, did whoa, like whoa. these giant things, and uh, nowadays, like you know, we make these really big, impressive skyscrapers yeah. and stuff. But it's like, think how much cooler would it be to just statue nowadays have now. like a statue of like some dude slamming on a guitar that's like right. three thousand feet tall, and like you know, you can see it for miles around. And it's like, well, yeah. who is that? And we're just like, I don't know. We just made oh. it because we could. Yeah, it looks dope, doesn't that's it? That's how far we've improved. I'll say, as far as uh, monuments and stuff go, technically, they're still trying to build Crazy Horse. If you want to donate to a good cause, donate to Crazy Horse. They're still trying to, like... Are they really? Yeah, they're still sculpting Crazy Horse. They do, uh, like, dynamite sculpting still. They're still, like, big chunks. But, like, you can see the head of his horse almost completely, and then you can see his head, and then his arm pointing isn't really, like, fully sculpted. This is, like, behind, They're still working on Crazy uh... Horse. 
behind the the president people, right? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like a few miles. Uh, I thought this was like you, know you had to drive away. up and it's behind far Rushmore. Away. No, 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 no. And no. it's like Resort is not on like the backside of Rush. No, yeah, neither is a, like so. uh, <laughs> a city of gold or whatever is also not <laughs> hidden inside or on top of Mount Rushmore. Is no, Richie Rich's no. hideout Eight. inside of one of the noses, no. though? I think there is actually like people. I don't want to say this because I forget, but like there is a little area you can walk into, like a little memorial type area for like people that died working on Mount Rushmore, I think, inside Mount Rushmore. Like I think that is actually a thing, like a little spot you can walk into because I think, I think President Bush or somebody has like a picture of him like there, uh, something like that. That's like 200 feet down. It's like everyone that's entered this hole has died. Has has died, yeah. You may join their number if you wish. (laughs) You want to, yeah. You can just jump. That's just like Uh, a ticker counter. You like walk through the turnstile and it like clicks up. Oh gosh. Yeah, it clicks and you Oh Oh, goodness gracious, Simeon. No, uh, they didn't finish off, but they they definitely uh, New York really quickly. Really quickly. Um, we went and saw whatever that play. The next play we saw, I believe, was Hamilton. I will say this: not, not my favorite one of the week because I've heard it on stop uh, for seven years because my sister and then other people who I've been around and theater kids, yeah, were theater people. Hamilton. Tend theater to people to theater it's music yeah. theater but like everybody everybody listened to hamilton like everybody you know like it was real popular so i kind of had to like listen to it a whole bunch and i was like oh it's pretty cool like there are things you miss not seeing the acting that goes with it right overall i was like i knew this one I knew it was going to be solid it was solid although shout out to the one lady uh sitting by herself in the balcony in these like single balcony cubbies which could fit like four people but she was there by herself she looked like mega depressed the whole time so shout out to you oh. miss i hope i hope it brightened your day somewhat um that was just seeing the, Hamilton at two o'clock in the afternoon i don't know i hope it did but that was just the uh, ghost of uh, martha lincoln yeah i don't know what right. the actual lady's name was but yeah let's go with that um it was martha though was it no <laughs> it could i know it was martha is martha washington for sure and somebody who knows more about american history is like really called her i thought you were like Patriotic. I'm patriotic. You don't know I, don't, every I don't know. President history, wife's no. I can't name? know every president's wife. How yeah. dare you? Uh, so then after we saw Hamilton, we saw, and this one really slapped, it was six. So we had a very historical day. So six is about the six wives or the six queens of Henry the Eighth ah, uh, of Henry England. VIII, right? Am, Henry the Eighth. Yeah, exactly. I got married to so, the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. Not, is that's, that an actual rhyme people that's, say? Yeah, that's an actual song. Um, oh, okay. I'm Henry VIII. I am Henry VIII. I, am, I, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but something like right. divorced, died, beheaded. Yes. Survived. Uh, divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived is the yeah. uh, is what they say. So it's really cool. They they base all the queens, all their style is based off like pop stars. So like the first one was a very uh, Shakira looking like person. The second one was some other pop star, but I know one because she had like the high ponytail with a very like tight ponytail. It was like Ariana Grande based. Really? And, like one was like, yeah. So like they all have like, like that very style. Modern. Okay. Very, oh yeah. Very, very modern. Very much like pop stars in the last like 20 years. Really. Um, there was no Billie Eilish baggy t-shirt queen, um, <laughs> but the rest of them were, were like based on like singers wow. from like modern time. So this, um, this king had bad taste is what you're saying. He had clearly bad taste. Yeah, 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 obviously. No, but all their songs were great. And it's it's very much like a concert in the way there's not a ton of acting. But the acting that was in between songs did add to it. Because, again, this is a musical I'd heard before. I didn't have all the acting in between. And it makes it like a fun game of, like, which queen had the worst life. And they kind of turn it around. And it has, like, a pretty good story. And the costumes were, like, probably the most cool, important part was not only does it have, like, the main colors of what these characters like original like family houses or whatever were at the time but it also like i said mixes in modern pop star flair like even if i didn't know it was based off of like ariana grande you could tell by like her outfit and how she styled her hair that you're like they're going for an ariana grande look right and then there was a character who was like very explicitly like german and so her outfit was not so much a skirt but it was like german shorts like lederhosen type looking shorts which is hilarious so it was like it was not only like culturally inspired 
modern inspired and then also like colors so i don't know like i as someone who enjoys cosplay and costumes i was also impressed and also the fact they had holsters for their little mics was hilarious and i i laughed super hard the first time i saw them all like you know holster their mics when someone else was singing and they weren't i was like (laughs) oh that's hilarious that's awesome um so yeah it was a great it was great atmosphere too i felt like i was at like a live show um next we saw come from away which is a show about 9-11 and we saw that in new york city uh and i did cry during that show it's actually about new finland um yeah dude it was it's hard to get through like there's this one song about this like one of the first female pilots right she the entire song she's singing about like how in the sky she gets to finally fly a plane she makes it through whatever and this is like in the 80s and stuff where it was like oh women can't fly planes they don't belong in the cockpit you know to quote captain marvel right um and then like she ends it with being like because 9 11 happened fly anymore and it's like heartbreaking because you're like dang that's like her favorite thing in the world and because of someone using what she loved as a as a terrorist action she can't she can't do what she loves anymore and you're like dang that's rough um and it's really great they did a great job of showcasing all these different cultures and different people that were affected by 9-11 and how people during these flights all had to they i guess redirected a ton of flights to newfoundland newfoundland yeah. whatever it was called yeah and i mean i didn't know this i was three yeah. Right, when this oh. happened, I wasn't exactly conscious. Okay. During, yeah, no, yeah. I was. I forget how young you are, exactly, but uh... yeah, yeah. You know, like I never actually experienced watching the news during this, thinking like it was oh, a off. You know, crazy, like, crazy time for. Imagine, oh, man. Let's see. That was twenty years ago, give or take. Twenty-one um, years ago. Twenty-one years ago. It's yeah. it's been a crazy Almost. time since then. Like the- oh, absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. But like it's so it was crazy cool seeing like I don't know how this you know small country folk type island, a town of nine thousand people, relatively all in my opinion, pretty big as far as South Dakota towns go. But for them, small. It was like people like man can't tell a red state from a blue state in Canada. <laughs> like that was a great line. I laughed really hard about that. Um, there was one about, and there was all like a true story too, like about this British dude and this Texas woman finding love because they were on the same flight together and they probably wouldn't have talked you know, unless they would have had made this stop in Newfoundland where they actually kind of had to interact with other people on the flight versus yeah. like putting your headphones yeah, like, and forget about it. Stuck right? there for a couple days. Yeah, like probably. a few days. Yeah. Like that was wild and like all, it was so fun. It was a great show. It was really fun. Gosh, what was next? No, 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 no. Oh yeah. Beetlejuice. So we ended it with Beetlejuice here a Halloween fan, horror fan whatsoever. Beetlejuice is pretty classic. I don't think people count it as horror. Beetle Some geese, sort of body beetle horror. Beetle geese. Beetle geese. Beetle geese. Yeah. All that fun stuff. But what was really cool is we didn't expect it, but the original actor who played Beetlejuice was reprising his role. And I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, oh. that's a cool surprise. And he killed it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton was there. Yeah. Yeah, no, his name's like Alex Brightman or something, who's like the original Broadway Beetlejuice. Oh, um, not the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the original. Yeah, not okay. the original, original Beetlejuice. I would feel bad to see Michael Keaton do the things that guy did on stage. And be like, oh, are you okay? Do you need to take like some Ben Gay <laughs> rub, rub on you there, dude? You feeling all right? Some Man, icy really hot Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton up <laughs> yeah. Look at yeah, the I can see it. stuff he's doing. <laughs> oh, man, I'd be so impressed. Michael Keaton did what this guy did. I'd be like, dang, he can move. Look at him go maybe actually does do a ton of coke while he's here to like get him through the show i'd be <laughs> impressed no but it was great and the lady that did that was lydia deets killed it she had pipes for like probably a really like young girl um the original barbara Lind? i don't remember the name and then like the dude who's like the dad who also he's not a dad yet i guess the husband that dies wasn't the original but he was like funny he was a funny guy um better than alec baldwin I'll say that. That's that's not a high bar, but, you know, easy. I will say one thing about Beetlejuice. There was... Uh, the only thing I was disappointed was they never did the big weird heads. You know, when they actually try to be scary and they morph their heads into, like, creepy shapes, you know, yeah. with, like, the eyes on his fingers. Stretches, they didn't do that. Stretches his nose out, makes his, like, yeah. fingers all have eyes. They, they didn't do that, and I was really looking forward to that. I mean, obviously, it would have been tough for, like, a theater production to do, but they could have went behind a curtain, and you, they could have been like, ooh, I'm doing it, and then come back with, like, a helmet on. They didn't do that, and I was like, ah, oh, man, I was looking forward to that a little bit. But it was a standout, amazing show. 
Did um, they do the it was just broke tally like, man, tally my banana? Yes, song? they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, cool thing. They made a way for Lydia to float in the air above the staircase. Like that was really cool. Without me ever seeing them like attach wires to her, so I assume like there was like know, something that would lift her up off like the staircase and like move up. Like it was part of the staircase. Maybe she was like sitting on it. It like flipped out when we weren't looking, and she like sat down on it or something. I don't know, but it was really weird. I was like, ah. I don't know how they got her up there, but okay. And um, yeah, so and at all these shows, they had specialty drinks and specialty cups. So my sister, you know, loves Broadway, loves all this jazz. So well, actually, there I wasn't any jazz there. Um, so yeah, we, we had to buy specialty cups. And of course, we had to buy the specialty drink each time because it's fun. Calder, don't be lame and get a Diet Pepsi every time, Calder. <laughs> but um. Well, Simeon, the specialty drink with the cup is usually like forty dollars, Simeon, oh. which is why I did not want to buy a specialty drink each time. But uh, ouch! You know, yeah, that's it was like, a lot. That's like a lot, whole Simeon. worlds of fun meal plus drink yeah. plus yeah. souvenir cup. Oh. Hope, that's, hope that's my a, two shots wow. of tequila with my Hamiltini is worth it. Um, uh, yeah, tequila in a in a martini. What? Yeah, it was that plus like sour apple. They called it a Hamiltini. That plus uh, like sour apple and something else. It wasn't the worst one we had. They, they oh. made you pay an exorbitant amount. Hot. For me. It a lot. Um, Come From Away had Screech, which was there like it's in the musical. They sing a song about Screech and they mixed it with orange juice. And I was like, I've never tried that before. And then I had a sip and I was like, I never want to try that again. So like a um, screw okay. I don't know. It wasn't good. It wasn't huh. good. Okay. Um, and then the best one was probably Beetlejuice had a green apple slushy, yeah, literally just something else. jungle juice. That was just yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was jungle juice, bug juice or something from a gas yeah. station. They poured it in. Oh, yeah, we saw all the plays. We acquired all the specialty cups. Um, I bought a it's Showtime Beetlejuice baseball three quarter sleeve shirt, which is awesome. And go. I bought a a seventy dollar come from away hoodie. My sister. I love her. Have a seventy dollar hoodie, which actually isn't a terrible price. <laughs> but I'm buying that, it's a drink, the forty dollar drink, and a lot at the come from away. Booth. Yeah. Um, I had never thought so. Like I, I've never been to New York, but I had never thought like, for whatever reason, knowing how much upcharge there are on events, I had never thought like a Broadway drink could be. It's. In like the forty dollar range, the cup it's like the cup itself is a little plastic. It's like a plastic cup. Right. It's not terrible. It's, it's washable, a souvenir, but it's like it's a souvenir cup. Yeah, I'm they like, pay man, two dollars at cup. most. Yeah, and then they they their upcharge on it is ninety percent. Yeah, like a hundred and ninety percent, nine hundred percent. I don't know. Um. Real quick, top top five uh, memorials or statue? What I don't know what uh, landmarks. Top top five, top five landmarks. landmarks. Do. Uh, so number one, Statue of Liberty. That was great, breathtaking. I honestly, when I got there on the boat, I was like, oh man, I thought this is how my ancestors felt. Yeah, did they check you? Half in? of them are half of them are Native American, and half of them are Norwegian. So maybe the Norwegian half was like, oh wow, this is cool. <laughs> um, but yeah. I was like, was I honestly the, never thought the, I'd uh, see entrance process for like the Native Americans when they oh, came to Ellis Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, can you choose a new name, an easier one to pronounce? They're like, I guess John. And they're like, perfect. That's what we're, that's what we're Great. after. Your yeah. Whole <laughs> Thank you. Lineage will be <laughs> named at John. That'll be John something. Perfect. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was it was really tough. Yeah, it was actually they were actually going out. They were actually trying to ship them out. Uh, that was their process for Ellis oh, yeah. Island back uh, home. Yeah, to, right to America. To where? <laughs> to, to America. Uh, so no, number one, Statue of Liberty. It was breathtaking. I honestly never thought I would see it. I was like, oh wow, this is actually cool. No, number two, because uh, I'm selfish, we saw the Captain America statue in Brooklyn that they made for his 75th anniversary in 2016. Um, it was sculpted by a Brooklyn artist. That was really cool. So we saw that Captain America statue that I was like, really? Again, I, I was really they pumped. Made that. It was pretty yeah. cool. Kinda I like always did, think it's like, cool when they do stuff like that because it's like, it's modern day mythos. Like it's, yeah. you know, we've got statues. It's in to Brooklyn like, too. Older kind of myth stuff, but like this is 
This is like modern day mythos, and it, yeah, because there's there's like a Rocky Balboa statue and stuff like that. So it's just cool. It's like, is Steve Rogers real? Well, not in this universe, but that's still his hometown. Yeah, exactly. Now I would say it was a little weird that it was in front of the Bed Bath and Beyond in Brooklyn, <laughs> but um, I guess it's the thought that counts, I suppose. Yeah, sure. Uh, the next like cool thing was like Times Square. You know, just it is just a bunch of TVs and stuff. But there's also that's that red staircase thing that in Amazing Spider-Man Two he's got to save from people like dying from yeah, you know an electro is gonna shock it or whatever. Like that was kind of cool seeing that and like I wanted to mimic the video of like Captain America looking around Times Square, but it was never not insanely busy uh, to not just get run over if we would have like totally stopped and tried to like video something. Um, the flat iron building. But like, what's that? It was used as Daily Bugle in the first three Spider-Man movies. That was, I probably, oh, okay. I'd say, yeah, fourth favorite thing we saw. Flatiron Building was really, really cool. Um, I'm, I'm going to feel bad if I, like, say something that's, like, not, like, another, like, really big one. Um, but I'm going to say the Wall Street Bowl was really cool. Um, and it was also, like, a really cool, because tons of people are trying to take pictures with it, right? Um, the line to take a picture with the back of the bowl was longer and the, the line front. to take a picture with the front of the bowl. And you might be wondering, the well, Mountain Calder, Oyster why friends. would they do that? Mountain well, you Oyster see, they, fans, yeah. yeah, the Mountain Oyster fans wanted to take a picture of purely sculpted uh, back of the bowl. And I was like, what is wrong with you people? And, you know, because it's, it's a pretty odd, not yeah. copper, but it's like a bronze statue. Yeah, so you can, tell, you can tell where people have touched it the most. Right. You know, what you understand what I'm saying here, Simeon? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was... Interesting, to say the least. Yeah, those would be bronze. Uh, to my top five. Yeah. But then, quick shout out to the Native American Museum there. All of the doors, the windows have a Native American face with someone with either like finding features. Each one's like a different sculpted like head. Um, so, shout out to that one as like a close fifth, sixth place because I didn't even notice it right away that they were all different. And it also had like bears, the feathers are lions. And I'm like, that's, they're not, you know, native to. Americas or whatever, and then it was bears instead. I'm like, that's really cool. And all the different heads were different natives with like headdresses or just long hair or braids or something, where it was like they weren't all the same. And I was like, ah, oh, that's so neat. So that was another another shout out. Um, but yeah, New York was awesome. It was fun. And then as far as food goes, shout out to the pizza on I forget what the pizza place was, but it's in my first picture. And then shout out to the peanut butter chocolate banana pudding by the Magnolia Bakery. Wow, that was good. I, you know, didn't know what to expect, but it was delicious. And we've talked a lot about New York, but it was a great trip. It was real yeah. fun. No, that's the, so, that's the thing about yeah. uh, Dial H here is this was a, an important trip. This first time you've been to New York, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's so we get, to, we get to spend 20 minutes talking about it because it's cool. And it's, right. uh, you know, McConnell Lamar's from there. A few other True, yeah, listeners yeah. are from there. Yeah. There's a few yeah. people bouncing around in New York, but this was Calder's first time. And dang yeah. it, at some point I'm going to go to New York and I'll tell you all about how I survived in the uh, subway system because I got trapped or something if I ever go. Oh, man. But you survived like when you <laughs> did your trek all the way to across New York and you had to get back to Coney Island where you're staying, but you couldn't use the subway because people were hunting you, Simeon. Yeah, that's going sure, to be sure. a wild story. I'll tell you about the time I had to escape New York <laughs> if, and if you a know, giant you know. tidal wave came in and oh, I yes. surfed my way yes. out. That'll be my New York story. By the time I get there, that'll be what's happening. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, it's 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 cool. I've always wanted to go to New York. Some of my family's been. Um, I've heard plenty of stories about it. I just, you know, my bucket list is more so away from people. So New York's like on like the bottom of like where I want to go because most of the time it's like I want to see big old trees and mountains and stuff. But uh, no, we've got awesome landscapes that are like man-made as well so it is really right. cool also just being able to experience so much of broadway and like so much um oh, dude. like so many musicals in one was the single city is that's pretty awesome because I mean, when we first like flew out we only had tickets to two of them it was like hamilton and i think come from away or something like that like those are the only two we planned to see and then we were like well there's a bunch of other ones that are also here in town. Like, let's, let's go to one every night. And I was like, yeah, heck yeah. And so, like, that so made the trip was being able to see all those. I mean, if you guys ever have the chance, 
go to New York and you like theater whatsoever, I strongly recommend if you can do it and see a show every night because it was awesome. And some of them had like cheap tickets. Like we didn't go to Phantom of the Opera, but if we wanted to, it would have been like 30 bucks a person. You know, it would have been like stupid cheap. Um, so like some of them were like not expensive at all either, which is nice. But yeah, no, theater was was a huge part of it. Theater, food, and then like tour busing around the city. And the tour bus also had Statue of Liberty. Those were like, I definitely would say m- like my favorite, favorite parts, like the musts to do. Or maybe I just like food. I was talking to a guy as we were driving or on the whatever rail system back to Newark uh, to fly out. He was like, you know, making casual conversation with someone in our car. And he's like, so you guys going, coming, going, whatever. And I was like, oh, no, we're, uh, we're leaving. And he's like, oh, yeah, how'd you enjoy New York? And I like, was telling him about this. And he's like, so you like food, huh? And I was like, what's that supposed to mean, Brian? What do you mean I like food, huh? Most I told you about like, like food. A, a Reese's peanut butter cup and my, my banana pudding and my cheesecake, my pizza. What do you, what do you mean? I got to eat. I'm a human being, right? That's true. What do you yeah. mean? You can't go hungry. It's like food. It's like food. And then I was telling him about like the drinks. He's like, ah, oh, so you're a whiskey guy, huh? And I'm like, yeah. You, you look like you look like a craft beer IPA guy. What's that supposed to mean, Brian? Huh? <laughs> you thought? Did you get any glizzies while you were in New York? Stop yeah, by, yeah, I did. I did have to get a New York. I won't lie. Every time I had a New York hot dog, I had two hot dogs in New York. I felt incredibly sick. I just I don't think I'm a hot guy. Uh, I like, I'm hot dogs are like a. It's a very simple meal for a very simple time. It's like yeah, it's like man, eh, you know, like like when I have cereal for breakfast, it's like eh. I, I don't want to really do anything, but I still want to eat. Yep. So, That's easy. So I'll have a hot dog. Or that out to be a Statue of Liberty spicy chicken sandwich. The, the Liberty Torch chicken sandwich they had. I was like, I got to get that. It was solid. <laughs> it was a solid spicy chicken sandwich. So I want to have the world's most exclusive chicken sandwich. You can ferry out to the Statue of Liberty. It's like, I'm going to sprinkle, sprinkle some copper on it. Tell me when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grinding down pennies on my like, sandwich. Mm, mm, delicious. It's like freedom. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. We talk about HeroClick stuff. Simeon the Swords has an OP kit. It's actually a pretty sizable OP kit, and they got a ton of figures. We're going to do a set review eventually. Yeah. But tell me about some of the ones we've seen in some nationals that you wanted to talk about. All right. So um, at nationals, at Gen Con, we saw quite a few because the uh, the full three-month set of uh, the X of Swords story organized play kit got dropped at Gen Con. So oh. since that happened... Did they have to put it get back together when they dropped it or... Yeah, I mean, there there was a Humpty Dumpty in the set, so I, right. I at least know that much. But uh, okay, since okay. the whole set was dropped, or not the whole set, since a portion of the set was dropped, we're not going to f- do a full set review. Um, but we do know, we know like a bunch of the commons, some uncommons, a bunch of the rares and the super rares. We've also seen some of the uh, participation prizes as well as some of the, like, prizes like the winner prizes for each month um it looks to be a fairly full set and from what we can tell so far it is a completely separate set from the x of Swords set so not only are the swords doing things that are different but the characters mm-hmm. that are in the main set are also doing different things uh there are let's see we've got so far we've got the fury the civil Alti, vampire white priestess green priestess um which were all generics in the first set. Right. Uh, they have different higher point values now. So in the OP kit, they'll fill out your team a little bit stronger, which is good because you're only getting four figures in the booster usually. Uh, we also have a 15-point Stepford Cuckoo that is going to be an excellent stand-in for the bystanders that the main set Emma Frost generates. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff. Honestly, Like some of the things in the OP kit are better than the main set some of the equipments in the op set are better than the main set ones and then uh alternatively all obviously the other way around some of the main set stuff is way way better than like the op set stuff um but one of the figures i'm going to talk about it's one of the figures i really like 
there's a lot better power commons and uncommons, I think, in the OP set, which is good because it's a smaller format. So if you pull, you know, 125-point Rachel Summers in the organized play kit, she's a little bit easier to start with than the 100-point Rachel Summers in the normal set. And same with, like, the 100-point Rogue, the 100-point Havoc, that kind of thing. But I'm going to talk about the Uncommon Pog or Pog. So, Ooh, so this okay. this Pog or Pog has the Animal, Arako, Armor, Assassin, Warrior keywords. Almost all A's. Sadly, they yeah. threw that, that W in there. Um, for 60 points, you have six clicks of Stealth, six clicks of Super Senses, three clicks of outwit top dial and then three clicks of shape change bottom dial so you've got that double rollout with 16 defenses on the last three click uh 17 defenses on top three you do have the optional trait to start with a sword not sure if this character comes with a sword that's like the one the one thing we're missing is we don't know what swords come with what every booster gets a sword though every booster does come with a sword yeah he'll be able to equip one of them yeah there is a Pog yeah. or Pog sword, and that is oh, okay. Blades, Claws, Fangs, Giant Reach 3. If this character already has Giant Reach, increase the X by 1. So Giant Reach so 3 good. is actually better than normal Giant Reach. Um, it's actually equal to Colossal Reach, I believe. So the only time it would be increased by 1, it makes sense, is if like they have that uh, Colossal Reach or like something like... Um, I don't know, some character that has some better version of Giant Reach already. But the thing that I really like about this character, for 60 points, not super offensive. Obviously, no move and attack. It's stealth, the whole dial, outwit, super senses, shape change, that kind of thing. Uh, you can equip a sword to him for 5 points, making him 65. But it's the Pogger Pog is the more fit. When Pogger Pog starts the game, generate an armored Pogger Pog bystander if armored pog or pog was generated this way he may use the effect of any sword equipment equipped to pog or pog oh, so your bystander okay. gets to use whatever sword you chose to put on this guy which is infinitely better because the armored pog or pog has 10 speed dolphin symbol 10 attack precision strike 17 uh, defense with toughness and 3 damage with battle fury and he's giant size so, oh, okay. Yeah, so he's gonna have a giant you, reach three then. Yeah, with the sword. You give him that's that enough. giant reach three with the sword. Um, he's got precision strike. He's got dolphin symbol charge. So he's, you know, if he's in water, can't be targeted from range except if they're within four. Uh, can't be targeted with in cap mind control. Can't be. Uh, let's see, what else does Battle Fury grant you? Oh opposing characters can't use shape change plus he's got precision strike so like the rollouts don't matter a whole lot to him it's all like really pretty solid and then this bystander has a trait that is i pray i pray you wait just a moment armored pogger pog can't be chosen for mastermind after the after resolutions of any action if no friendly character named pogger pog is on the map ko armored pogger pog so if the 60 point character dies this bystander also dies. When armored pog or pog would take damage, you may instead roll a d6, and on a 1 through 3, you deal the 60 point pog or pog 1 unavoidable. On a 4 through 6, you deal the 60 point pog or pog 2 unavoidable, and that's protected pulse wave. So he's got a way to reduce damage so you can't poison the pog to death. Um, anytime he would take damage, though, you can potentially offshoot it to <laughs> that uncommon 60 point piece so he's not really doing a whole lot he's mostly relying on his bystander but this is a bystander that i really like generating it's a really solid figure uh the normal pog or pog does not have any special combat symbols so he's not a dolphin symbol like hiding in water terrain but he does have stealth so you can you can pop in stealth maybe if he gets hit down to like the last three clicks you got two rollouts um if you get lucky with your rolls on your bystander uh, a 10 for 3 is pretty scary. And then a 10 for 3 with Blades and potentially, you know, Blades Plus is a really solid bystander. And then if they do base the normal, by, like the normal figure, not the bystander, he also has whatever effect the sword that you equipped is. 
Um, mm. Yeah, it's just a bystander generator I really like. I think he's pretty solid and sealed. There's obviously yeah. like higher point things that can <clears throat> do a lot more, but this is a, a very sneaky, um, you know, you you almost just throw the bystander at your opponent, lock them down with it, and if they try and KO it, you know, you have this six-click long dial that's at most taking two at a time, and it's pretty solid. I like it. I like the design. It reminds me of, like, the Gertrude York's old lace kind of design. And, yeah, uh, yeah I think it's a good way to fill out teams and sealed or battle royals. It's really a, a fun, different character. I like the idea. I don't think we've ever seen, I think, a bystander use the element of a character before. So that's really cool. No. So, yeah, I don't think we have. It allows, like, a lot of cool, interesting, like, combinations, like, future games. Like, it really adds to this dude's playability. By letting him uh by letting him do that give him like purity sword so then your bystanders make him more bystanders oh yeah um, every time you're bystander, um, you know <laughs> you make a bystander sure yeah there you go like that, that's hilarious so okay i dig it that's really fun i like i like figures like this that are just like wacky and different but a unique take on something we've seen before that's no all right now not as unique of a figure but uh, just a, a beast we got we have the rare wolverine whiz kids likes making Sealed environment Wolverines, absolutely insane. Uh, so it doesn't stop here. It's got ignores characters, which is fun. He's 145 points plus an optional five point to be a sword bearer. Yeah. He has a which trait. I think he's always going to be a sword oh, bearer. You should. You should always. I mean, if you look at, so he's got 11 clicks of life. If you get him in your booster, you should always choose him, and then you should always. I think you always get the sword. Oh, I think he should absolutely be your sword bearer just for how long of a life he's going to live. It's insane. Right? So he's already got 11 clicks of life. Um, he has traded willpower. Whenever he rolls a 5 or 6, a single D6 roll. So for any single D6 roll, right? For resolutions, you may remove an action token from him and heal him one click. So that is well alert. He has impervious. He has super senses. If you become a sword bearer, he has blades. And then he has willpower. So yeah. in addition to already <laughs> moving an action token from him for normal willpower can remove him another action token from him and so also and that, heal on the click on your offensive turn you probably have two d6 rolls you have the, your willpower and your blades on a defensive right. turn you have your impervious and super senses on four clicks otherwise you always have a d6 roll so yeah there's yeah just always a way to heal him potentially oh again it's a unique take on healing all this D6 based stuff. Yeah. It's almost a shame the rare Magneto from original X of Swords isn't in this set, who subtracts it by one. Um, not that oh, it would yeah. matter. It's still when he rolls a five or six, but still, it's like, dang, man, like that'd be a good counter to this guy. But it's, it's not. The main set has a sword um, that gives. Was it the main set or is it this organized play? It's a sword somewhere. Is somewhere that... minus one as well? No, I think so. A, is it. It's Warlock's sword. That's what it is. Oh, so it'd be this it one. It would be in the... and shape change. Yeah, this is so. Oh, gross! The chance of pulling oh. the sword with this Wolverine, I don't know what they are, but um, the Warlock sword at zero or S zero one five is blades claws plasticity shape change. So giving Wolverine another oh. rollout, oh. another attack roll. Um, I mean, obviously he's gonna have blades no matter what. But right. Yeah. Giving him two rollouts on most clicks. It's a little nasty. Yeah. A little nasty. So he, he's got charge, top dial. He's got 12 attack. He has 18 defense. with so a special defense power, which is impervious. Super senses. Detected out wit. So, you know, good luck with that. Maybe pack some precision strike, I would say. If you're picking and choosing battle royale stuff, you see someone pulls this guy. Might not be the best pick in the world, but if you're like seated next to him, maybe uh maybe grab a precision strike piece, make that a priority to try to beat on this Wolverine. You you probably need it. Um, yeah, protect it out with on the impervious super senses, just that special defense power. He's also got leadership. He has a twelve attack for his first three clicks, and then an eleven attack for three clicks, and then a ten attack for three clicks, and then a nine attack for two clicks. He's got a lot of charge, so it goes like two clicks of charge and then flurry, and then two clicks of charge and then flurry throughout the rest of his dial. And then he has leadership, exploit, close combat expert in that order. And then he has impervious super senses special, just super senses, and then just impervious in that order throughout 
like alternating throughout his entire dial. So this would be like a dial that you could memorize pretty easily. Like if you weren't allowed or if it was back in the era where there were no looking on the backs of cards, you'd be like, okay, I always have exploit weakness when I have super senses. I always have flurry and close combat expert and impervious on a click, which is nasty. Love it. Uh, but yeah, he's 11 clicks long. It's 150 points. He's got all these rollouts, all this healing, all this keep, you know, removing action tokens, keep fighting. He is insane for a battle royale format. Yeah, this Wolverine's absolutely nutty. Oh my gosh, they love they just love making good Wolverines. Combined with like a hands. like a solid defend piece, his dial becomes even like worse, but like yeah. Like no die stuff, yeah. Just there's man. there's so many ways that you can use this guy. Obviously, he'll likely come with the Muramasa blade, which the Muramasa blade in this set is different than the main set one. It's slightly worse in my opinion. It's blades plus fangs when this character uses it. Give the hit character a curse token if they don't already have one. This game, when a character with a curse token would heal, they instead remove a curse token. Prevents people from healing, which is good against this Wolverine. Because he'll be healing quite a bit. Oh, true. Um, oh, true. But I don't know I don't know exactly if the OP boosters, like the organized play boosters, come with rare specific weapons or equipments. Or if it's just kind of random. Random sword. Yeah. We really don't know at this point, but I assume it's not super random. But yeah. We've gotten quite a few of the commons, uncommons. We've gotten quite a few of the rares. Um, honestly, quite a few of the super rares. And then we have all of the organized play, the uh, prize pieces. LEs, yeah. Yeah, so... There's some cool ones. As soon like as we get lot. done... As soon as we have like the full set, uh, we will be able to tell you all about which ones you're going to want to pick up. Uh, spoiler alert, it's most of them because there's some really, really solid figures. Really, they're really good. Yeah, the Real good, good old Sheriff Gaia Whitechapel that makes the Blight Spoke Posse. Good old Here's Blight my Posse. Blight Spoke Posse with blades and range combat expert. And, uh, Love it. Blunder buses. What a, what a dial, dude. Yeah. And then again, once we get uh, the full set of tarot cards, which we're not super far away from, we'll have to do a full like oh, seventy-eight card roundup kind of thing. Gosh, which Ugh. honestly, so much. it'll be easier than it sounds like because uh, I think we can categorize them into um, like generic effects, uh, mission point effects, and oh, yeah, like, good global effects because some of them are really good global effects. Some of them are like characters with combat reflexes get a plus one so it's like most people won't ever use that there's some pretty skippable cards yeah there's some really skippable ones uh the major arcana seem to do like the craziest stuff but uh no there's like there's certain speed powers i think speed powers are like the the big one for me because um that tends to be in hero clicks like the thing that you want like to control the most is like what speed yeah. you have charge the running shot the hypersonic stealth yeah. is if i could drop card. opposing speed by you know minus three that really reduces their reach and it's pretty crazy Very true it's you down but all right that is that is the ten of swords x of swords whatever you want to call it op kit stuff for that we're going to cover this week did get some awesome news that i'm very excited about we got a schedule WizKids 2022 World Championship events. This is Heroes and yeah. Dice Masters. Not that we care too much about Dice Masters. No attack oh. wing, um, though. No attack wing, oddly enough. Hmm. That's mm. just head. Hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll just go through the schedule really quick. We'll just alternate days. Yeah. So it opens up Thursday, September 15th at 2 p.m. Oh, man, Simeon, this is, uh, it's close. It's a month away. A little over a month away, but yeah. it's close. We are I'm... recording this on the 13th of August. So yeah. about a month from when you are hearing this, oh. um, Thursday, I will say before we get into like this, if oh, you're yeah. planning on going on going to Worlds, the room block is open. You can pay fifty dollars on top of whatever the room cost is. You can split the room like four ways if you have a couple people going with you. I think it goes up to like four ways pretty easily. Yeah. Um, you can pay fifty dollars on top of that for each person that's in the room, and you get free uh, convention exclusives that basically cover the cost of like the 50 bucks cover part of the room cost when you sell them like it's it's a pretty it's a good deal. deal most of them are winnables yeah. they're not like the buyables so uh the rarity kind of depends on how much people actually want them 
but it's not a bad deal. Yeah, the market is. Like, It'll also the market. put you in the vicinity of most of the other Hero Clicks players. Puts you in walking distance of the venue itself. Um, the hotel has like free food on like certain nights and like some like fun little event kind of things. Not that that really matters, but it'll put you right next to the venue. You don't have to drive in. You can just, you know, Uber from the airport to there. If Worlds is something you want to do, I would definitely look into the room thing. Your major cost is going to be the flight and then that uh, room block. And then after that, the only thing that you should have to pay for is your battle royals and potentially like team sealed. Um, everything else is basically free at Worlds. Like the, the side events, most of the... Well, obviously, the the main championship qualifiers and stuff are all free, usually. Uh, and then the convention exclusives obviously cost money. But yeah, if you were putting aside money for Worlds, I'd put it, uh, let's see, somewhere around like the $1,000-ish mark. Because it depends on where you're flying out from and what yeah, hotel fly, yeah. like stay you're doing. But um, yeah, just on like the safe side. You're running low on time, though. I will say that. like, Not to like push anybody. If it doesn't seem like something feasible, there's always next year. Uh, Worlds is not something that's going to like end anytime soon, except it did for the last previous two years. Yeah, I was about but, to say, that's not like the but, most uh, aptly timed yeah. uh, statement, but okay. No, this is the first World in three years-ish. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, both going to be there. I think it's going to be a really fun time. We're going to have fun. We're going to be hanging out with people. Uh, it is just really I'm cool excited. to see people from around mostly the country, but also like there's a few international players that'll pop in. And so that's also really cool. Yeah, It's going to be a great time. And I can't wait to see everybody there. That all being said, doors open Thursday, September 15th, 2 p.m. The WizKids pop-up shop is going to start at 2. Quick Silver Age side event registration begins. Limit 64 people. Battle Royales begin. Ice Masters Rainbow Draft begins, and a Hero Clicks Learn to Play tables are open. That's all at 2 p.m. 3 p.m. is when the Silver Age Swiss, Swiss rounds begin, and then they're also going to do a Hero Clicks Ten of Swords storyline organized play begin. So those are, I assume, what they're yeah. running at Nationals, which is cool. Same thing they ran at Nationals. All three months, you get three boosters, uh, potential to win all three months worth of prizes, give or take. Yeah. 5 p.m. They're going to start a HeroClix World Championship qualifier. I know. Well, just hold on. More on that at the Those end. Grinders. Of... Yeah. Grinders. And then at 6 p.m., that's when the pop-up shop is going to close. So you got a four-hour window on the first day to buy Stand a bunch of line, stuff. Grab some, yeah. Yep. I think that's on the first day. Um, after, but... like, Silver Age starts, I feel like there's going to be – it's going to be full. There's going to be 64 players. After the Silver Age starts and between Battle Royals – you probably won't have to stand in a ton of line like from 3 p.m. to yeah. 6. You'll probably have a short enough line to pick up whatever convention exclusive you want. Um, in previous years, they had uh, a convention exclusives that had already rotated. So I think in 2019, they had like Felix Faust for like $5. Yeah. And they had Felix Faust, Supreme they had the Punisher Van. Like 15 Intelligence. Punisher for, like, yeah, yeah, they had like really cheap in-person Gold convention ones. exclusive prices. Funny. And it was, yeah, I picked up uh, Supreme Intelligence, and then I ended up winning one in a Battle Royal rate later. And so I was like, ah, I don't need two of these. But, um, yeah, that is a really awesome option. Right. Um, and obviously, you'll want to pick up whatever convention exclusives you can if you're there. It's obviously going to be, like, the cheapest place to get them this time of year. I mean, yeah. And battle Royales are going to end, sign-ups are going to end at 8.45, and they'll probably fire off one last Battle Royal. And that is it as far as Heroclix stuff goes on Thursday. Yeah. Friday morning, uh, this is like the, the crazy day. So Friday morning, September 16th, 9 a.m., uh, the pop-up shop opens. That's the convention exclusives. And, I mean, yeah. who knows what else they'll have. They might have some, like, starters and stuff, whatever else. Uh, but the pop-up shop opens, Heroclix Battle Royales begin, Dice Masters Rainbow Drafts begin, Heroclix Team World Championship registration begins. So, Team World Championship likely sealed, because they don't leave any time for uh, like judges checking off build sheets. So, I'm guessing Team World Championship for Worlds is sealed. They don't say it specifically, but... Going off of previous years, like every year previously, 
that I can think of in the last like five, six years, it would well, make Simeon. sense to assume. That's, that's only with the assumption that they wouldn't change anything after 20 years. Yeah. No, yeah. you know. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Dice Masters U.S. National Championship registration begins if, for whatever reason. Who knows? Like if if there's no one that signs up for Dice Masters, maybe I'll be in there. Maybe I'll be the U.S. <laughs> National Championship for Wouldn't Dice I Masters default? if I'm oh the only God. one to sign up. Or I mean, I'll be in the top four maybe if there's only three. Um, oh God! Hero clicks learn to play tables, me. so that's cool. It's cool that they're like, like they're doing like learn to play tables, it. even though you would assume like people that knew how to play would be the only ones that come here. But it's potential that there's like some people from Memphis or surrounding areas or people that just you know, got into the game. When we went last time, there were some new people yeah. that like their friends drug along. People so like, that it's are good just to have like these new player tables. Yeah, they either have someone already on the way there, or they just live, you know, within like a less than ten hour drive or something, and they like come and just hang out. Um, ten a.m. Team World Championship begins. So registration is at nine. I'm guessing once you're registered, you'll get your boosters, you'll crack them open, and then at 10 a.m., your teams will be set and you'll be off to the races. Dice Masters U.S. National Championship begins at the same time at 10.30. So not for anyone participating in the Team World Championships. HeroClix Extreme Tarot Scenario event begins. Limit 16 players. Extreme Tarot Scenario sounds interesting. What I'm hoping this is, I hope it's like a battle royal, but you have four tarot cards in play at all times, like every single turn, and like everybody gets to leave with like five tarot cards. Uh, so like, yeah, I don't know. I'm picturing four people playing five tarot cards. They get to leave with those five tarot cards that they pulled, and uh, yeah, I have no clue, no clue what this event could be because it's a brand new event. Obviously, tarot cards yeah. are new. Uh, extreme tarot scenario has to be new because tarot cards are new, but uh, it's a limit sixteen players. players. Oh. It's a side event. Prizing for previous side events have included like gravity feed, um, full sets of gravity feed. Yeah, yeah. full set, cha- oh. like full set collections of gravity feeds. Um, it's also included, you know, like Chase Prime sets. Uh, I got a what was it? Superman Prime. Superman Prime. Yeah, Superman Prime a, was a great uh, side event. Yeah. One that I didn't even win. I think I came in like third and I got the Superman yeah. Prime. So yeah. pretty awesome prizing. And again, I don't believe they charge for these side events because you're not you're not using any product. You didn't last time. This one so, yeah. might be using product. It's hard to say. But we don't know. Yeah, we don't either know. way, I will be excited to see what extreme tarot scenario event begins. Hopefully they use the extreme as in extreme rules, and there are some chair shots. <laughs> chair shots, I, yeah. Or make them eat an entire yeah. pint of Rocky Road ice cream. They'll I think be like, these hey, would all be good hey Dial H, the we need to pull you away from Team World so that you can uh, do some chair shots for some these chair extreme shots tarot on these scenario boys. people. I would love that. Uh, that would be an honor. Whiz kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let you us know, if you want us to bring you know, the chair so we can hit people with it, we'll do it. Uh, three and a half <laughs> Hours later, after the tarot scenario begins, okay. we have the Heroclix X of Swords storyline organized play beginning on Friday. So that's at 2 p.m. Yeah, Another organized play this for the uh, uh, X of Swords storyline, which is awesome. That means that there's so far two uh, full three month organized play sets going out. Um, all of this is in the background while the Team Worlds is playing. And then at 5 p.m. They have listed Heroclix World Championship Qualifier. So this is another grinder. This is another, yep. uh, whatchamacallit, you know, just to get quote-unquote qualified. Spoiler alert, you don't need to be qualified, but might help you. Right. At 6 p.m., WizKids Pop-Up Shop is going to close. So it's going to be open for, let's see, from... 9 to 6. 9, nine to 6. Whole hours. Yeah, 9 a.m. to 6 hey. p.m. that day. Uh, and then at 6 p.m., also the Heroclix Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy scenario begins. Limit 32 players. So this might be after the Heroclix uh, Team Worlds ends. If not, it'll definitely be after. Like I'm guessing this event will kick off after the top cut for sure. Um, 
so yeah the top cut will probably be around like five and then people can enter the world championship qualifier you don't know what it means (laughs) yeah uh we have no idea what Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy scenario begins. Uh, obviously, we use that bumper for our keywords segment. Yeah. Um, Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. No, not really. None of those. That's that's old Scott Porter's saying. So yeah. I'm guessing this scenario has something to do with s- keywords. But uh, generic keywords, what maybe. They, what I do hope they mean? It I, I don't I hope know. It means- can't use any keywords that Dial H didn't talk about in generic <laughs> gallery. And they have a list. I of doubt them. that's the, the setting. You have but to play one of the maybe, teams that they bro. made. Oh, oh gosh, yes, that would be You're hilarious. So bad. You draw like There's out of the hat. No it's chance. Like, all the pre-made teams. <laughs> but if they were that's like, why it's a limit of yes. thirty-two players because we you only get a handicap if you use one of their brute teams. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, but then the big thing. After after the Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, after the Team Worlds, is at 8 p.m. on Friday. So this is fairly early in the week. 8 p.m. on Friday, we have the Fan Appreciation Event. So this is, in 2019, this is where we found out about the chase theme for the Spider-Man right. uh, Venom Absolute Carnage set. This is where we found out about... Uh, the, some of the WWE figures that we hadn't seen yet. Like, this is the first time The Undertaker was announced. Stuff like that. It's really cool. Really, you know, gets a really big pop in the audience, to to quote a WWE phrase. Um, right. I know when Scott Dagnostio was like, who else is a big man? Because, like, they had shown uh, Andre the Giant. He's like, who else is a big man? And I was like, The Undertaker. And I, <laughs> I felt awkward because I screamed it really loud uh, and no one else said anything. And I was just like, but I was right. They did show The Undertaker after that. Um, and then Calder won some kibble scuffle. Uh, so, yeah, it. You're right. Yeah, at 8 p.m. They'll, they'll be giving away prizes, me. likely. Also, just showing us some of the cool stuff they're working on, which... You know, we don't always get to see cool stuff like that. So that's going to be fun. And oh, then that's why it's out my night, favorite event of like their week. Oh, that's fan All appreciation night oh. is my favorite. Oh, yeah. good. If I can get like a little bowl of popcorn to sit there and just like, oh, it's, you know, it's electric in the room. Oh, yeah. it feels so great. And we're like, yeah, Scotty D, lay it on us. Tell us all the new things that are coming out, yeah. bro. What do you, you guys want the knowledge? And we know you're being crazy. Um, they also, so sadly, they will show you some dice masters just to like, just yeah, to yeah, pr- yeah. forewarn everyone. They, you do have to sit through some dice masters to see the hero click stuff. Uh, no, that's pretty funny. No, the dice masters is cool. Like I personally don't play it because I only have room for the couple hobbies I have and dice masters would just cut into like too much other time, but, uh, it is a pretty prominent game in my area. Uh, at 9 PM. The Battle Royal signs signups are going to end, and then Dice Master Rainbow Drafts are going to end. So you'll be able to attend the fan appreciation and then also get into one last Battle Royal, most likely. Um, but then, yeah, it'll be about 10 p.m. when, like, the venue's out, completely yeah, closed go on. off. Get out Everyone's of here. like, go home, yeah. go back to your hotel room. And then, like, my favorite part of Nights Like Friday is you go back to Graceland Hotel and there's just a bunch of people, a bunch of HeroClix players hanging out in the lobby because uh, we're lonely folks. We're lonely people. So what else to do? Look at all the lonely people. Where do they all belong? Apparently the Graceland Hotel. So <laughs> you can just chat up some people that, like, maybe you've seen them online. Maybe um, you've played with them online. Maybe you've hung out with them. Uh, you know, maybe you have zero connection to them. You just, like, get to sit there and talk to them. And, uh, you know, not to name names, but, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, a few of them don't, don't get so drunk this year. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'd be good. It'd that, be nice. I mean, you know? it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was just, oh, it was just a bit much. Yeah. Sean Charles. Some just, people just know your limits. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Clearly that's <laughs> those who we're talking about. Yeah. They're yeah. the problem. Uh, all right. If you're not too drunk, though, at 9 a.m. bright and early, Saturday, September 17th, World Championship Judge Verification begins. So it's 300 constructed. Well, I'm going to say I assume it's 300 constructed. And thus, because it's constructed and a World Championship, you're going to verify your build sheets, baby. Build sheets, you're going to have your figures. 
there. Yeah. So I what I like figures to do, ready, your cards ready. Figures and cards. Yeah, figures, your cards, build sheet everything. correctly filled out, and your yep. maps available for them to all look at. You're gonna need to see it all. So none yeah. of this running back and forth, all that stuff. Need it all, baby. You need it all. Uh, the pop up shop is also gonna open at nine. The learn to play tables are also gonna open up, and the <clears throat> Registration begins, but only if you are judge verified first. So all of this is popping off at the same time. Yeah. Right. Judge and verification takes almost no time, but there will right. be a line because HeroClix World Championship. So yeah, we'll just I'll cut to this you real can. quick. Um, okay. HeroClix World Championships will be an open event in 2022, meaning that anyone who attends may play. The following players players will receive a first round buy. So literally anyone that is at the venue gets to play right. uh, in the HeroClix World Championship. People that get a first round buy include 2022 national champions, which I believe, I mean, outside of the U.S., uh, there's other national champions, but in the U.S., that's just Isaac, Isaac Arnold Berkowitz. It's just Isaac. Um, but yeah, there's there's the UK national champion. There's Emily in Canada. Uh, I right. can't remember the folks' name in Mexico. And oh, then Mexico. Yep. The guy who won in the Philippines. Uh, yeah. Can't remember his name either. Man, the top by of then, I think next week is going to be Australia's national championship. Yeah. So they will have a national champion. So that UK will get you a first round buy. It won't qualify you. Because you're already like everyone's going to be everyone, qualified this year. Everyone's qualified. So literally so anyone who shows us, up and wants to yay. play. But this will put you in a better shot for the running of the top cut. Right. Uh, players that win a qualifier event in Memphis. So any of the qualifiers that we've mentioned previously, all those nightly qualifiers, the basically grinders that we talked about. Also, just good practice. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Even if you don't need the qualification. It's good to uh, get the practice out that you need. Yeah, maybe uh, try a little weird in the area kind something. of stuff. Uh, yeah. The winner of the Silver Age side event will also get a first round buy, and then players with fifty or more WKO points will. How do I check those? It's at roc. Ion Suite. I O N S U I T E. Dot org. Uh, dot. Was dot com. Dot com. Is it sure Ion Suite. Dot com. com. I think it's a com. Uh, let's see. Think. Yeah. 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 ROC dot yeah, I O N S U I T E dot C O M rock ion suite dot com rock dot ion suite dot com. Um, that is where so you can get the, the current WKO points, which is weird because those are whiz kids open points, but it's um, whiz kids points. Yeah. But yeah whiz kids nope, points. You, but you, you need to go to the, the rock to, to figure out how many you have. Uh, there's a lot of people that are predestined to have a, a first round buy. Buy, yeah. Because 50 points in the last three years. Because uh, believe it or not, people have been running events in the last three years, and so it's possible. Since so, WizKids has not like cleared the slate and started from scratch for these because there hasn't been any big events really. Um, so it's very possible to have 50 or more. WKO points. I know I do. I know Calder does. Uh, basically, that's anyone that's won a state or a WKO in the last three years probably has 50 or more. If you've gone to more than a couple big events or like more than a couple. Imagine uh, after Worlds, they'll maps. probably wipe. I, I hope feel so. Like. Yeah. I hope they do. Yeah. Not, not because I don't want to be pre qualified, but because it just like the. The slate is too congested with um Yeah. This is basically that, most uh, of the people that would have already shown up are going to have a first round buy, which is gonna be odd. Because maybe yeah, it's they just, weird. maybe they just cut to round two. They don't even need to play like oh. the first round. There'll be like five people fl- playing the first round between the national That's champions, <laughs> the qualifiers, the silver age, and all the people with fifty or more W uh, I don't yeah. know how many people won't have a first round buy. And that's not like a dig at anybody that doesn't. Like, I'm sure you're very capable. You just haven't, for whatever reason, gotten the WKO points. Um, yeah, maybe you started but it playing is the going game to be, whatever. I feel like a small margin of the community that shows up. Uh, but that's all to say, those are the ways that you receive first round that's, by. Otherwise, that's how you get a play in national. Everyone else sorry, will world. be able to play. Like, you, you don't have to qualify yeah. at all. Um, 
if you are quote unquote qualified, you will get a first round buy. Otherwise, you just get to start playing uh, the first round. So there's going to be a whole bunch of people that just walking around, chilling out the first round. Um, I've so been... from from like ten to eleven, there's going to be like 70, 80 people just kind of wandering around yeah. looking at tables of like the 50 maybe people that maybe, didn't qualify or get a buy. Maybe buying some uh, some con exclusives or something. I yeah, don't know. Maybe playing yeah, a yeah. practice round or something. Doing sure. whatever you want to do. Getting their Waiting strategy the laid one. out kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, that's how, that's how the World Championship is going to begin. So at 10 a.m., that first round yep. is going to be mostly buys and then Anyone that didn't get a buy will actually be playing the game of Hero Clicks. How fun is that? That's pretty fun. Uh, at the same time, 10 o'clock, there's going to be Battle Royales for the rest of the world. Who's not going to play in Worlds? Yeah. Then at 2 p.m., so I assume this is about when it is going to happen, or at least enough people will know they're not going to make cut. Yeah, so drops. By 2 p.m., drops. For those of you that want to play more, 10 of Swords, Storyline, Organized Play. Bada bing, bada boom, that's for you. Yeah, that's... Uh, at four rounds in so you you should yeah. know i think you'd be you should know zero yeah. and three or zero and four at that point and you would know if like you're probably not going to make top cut and you can drop to to play in the organized storyline or, or yeah. play kit um otherwise just people that just showed up for battle royals okay. now is your then time at six to play that yeah pop-up shop is going to close and like every other day and then at 9 p.m once again the battle royale signups are going to close so Saturday's a pretty easy day. The big focus is yeah. world. Once all that's figured out, worlds will probably done, so. run. It depends on the amount of players, obviously, but it'll probably it run until about late. six. Uh, yeah, starting at ten. They don't say when Top Cut is. Yeah, they say Top well, Cut. Is they be can't the start really Sunday. say because you don't know how many people are playing in it. Yeah, yeah exactly. If they have a yeah. hundred and sixty people or two hundred people, uh, their Top Cut's going to have to go to Top Thirty Two or something. You know, might maybe even top sixty four, which I doubt, but like maybe depends Yikes. on how many people show you up. imagine. Yeah, I can. I can. I can imagine. Be wild. I mean. um, All right, now hit us with Sunday, the yeah. final day. So the <laughs> final day is uh, it's cleanup time. So uh, ten a.m. September eighteenth, HeroClix World Championship Top Cut begins. Uh, HeroClix Battle Royals begin. Dice Masters Rainbow Drafts begin. X of Swords storyline organized play begins. So all those people that weren't able to hang out and do battle royals and organized play stuff previous days because they were trying to do world championships, now they get to do that. The WizKids pop-up shop opens again, and the learn-to-play tables are open again. Um, at 10.30, the Popper Dice Masters event is going to happen, and then the Popper HeroClix event, limit 16 players, is going to happen. Oh. Which I hear that right. The first official like WizKids Popper WizKids Hero official side like in ROC states. That's pretty Did I cool. I hear someone say Popper. Yes. Popper? Yeah. Good reference. Good reference. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Popper main event. Um, no, I mean, sixteen <sighs> player limit, but it is it's a technically awesome. side event, but it, it's a main event in eight yeah. worlds. So um, obviously, Popper is a really awesome format for people to play in um it limits what you can play by quite a wide margin as far as what is typically played pretty cool uh hero clicks championship top cut like we said could be 32 who knows might be end up being like 64 might end up only being 16 depends on how many people show up and uh what's like left at the end of the day um but that'll be going on in the background as the popper Hero Clicks and Dice Master events pop off at 10.30. And then at 2 p.m. we have Hero Clicks Battle Royal signups and are going to end. So you only have four hours on Sunday to do Battle Royals. Um, and then the pop-up shop is also going to close at 2 p.m. So you only have four hours for that on Sunday, which makes us assume they're probably only accounting for like four rounds, maybe five rounds of uh, the championship top cut. Like it, it does not take long to get through the top cut because it's single elimination, no. but um, that will be, you know, roughly four to five hours, and so you'll be able to leave the venue if you're not in the top cut or none of your compatriots are <laughs> like that you're driving with or flying with are in the top cut. You'll be able to leave the venue pretty early on Sunday, and then uh, we already went over how you qualify. You just automatically qualify. You show up, you're qualified. 
Um, you do get a first round buy if you have additional qualifications, which once again are 2022 national champions, uh, players that win a qualifier event at Memphis, the winner of the silver side event at Memphis, and players with 50 or more WKO points, which again, you can check out at roc.ionsuite.com. Uh, the Dice Master World Championships are uh, also going to be anyone who attends can play. First round also gets a buy. The WizKids Fan Appreciation Event. It says no tickets will be needed, which they never have before. The pop up oh, shop, the stuff. WizKids pop up shop, will be selling WizKids <clears throat> items, including 2022 convention exclusives and other surprise items. What? Oh, yeah, who Sim, knows? Well, I like surprises. But I'm guessing. We don't know yet. Potentially a, a starter that's like unreleased, or mm. like maybe something early, or maybe just mm. like you know previous starters and like previous like bricks and stuff that like we haven't seen. Maybe they'll have okay. like some mighty Thor or okay. some gravity feeds we haven't seen. Who knows? There's like WizKids mm. has their hands on pretty much all the hero click stuff. Who would have thought Undead that Series WizKids... Two gravity feed? What? <laughs> <laughs> I Probably will buy not. them all. I, oh, yeah, no I will spend my entire time at the pop shop buying them all. Uh, it says, what's next? On Monday, August 15th, a list of legal game elements and pricing will oh. be announced. So that's in two like days that. as of this recording. Like that uh, a lot. There will be a full list of the legal game elements, maps, figures, uh, you know, equipment, all that stuff, and uh, prizing because... We told you all of the events, but we we didn't tell you any of the prizing for those said events, and oh. uh, tends to be pretty good prizing for worlds. That's I know right. most of the time people think when it comes to worlds, design a figure. Um, I it's well, classic. That's basically one. it. Yeah, you think you just think you could design a you figure. Get to design a like figure. You get your name a full on it. Set. You know, yeah, we know you that, get right? Factory it's sets, like a full factory set of like the latest set, and then like yeah, you design a figure. You get one and, like, of every convention exclusive. Think. Those are obvious right. prizes that like top eight gets kind of thing. Yeah. Um, obviously, the the world. Well, I'm a little curious to design if maybe the there's some Huntington's type prizing too. You know, like the design of, or choose a figure well, to get a legacy those are card, right? To Huntington's, but or are they? Oh, never mind. But you know, design a bystander or legacy card i could see I, mean, I can't remember which but one of them maybe not it probably i think design a bystander might be just a huntington's thing i i feel like choose a figure to get a legacy card a real chance that that is a prize for nationals but we don't we don't know yet that's speculation yeah. a few days probably the day after you listen to this <laughs> you'll know so maybe maybe won't do too much speculation but you know classic you know design a figure i think everybody agrees that's like the best that's prize yeah. that's what, everybody that's what thinks everyone wants they, they want to make their mark yeah. on this game and i think that designing a figure is like one of the best ways to do it and as Absolutely. as like a a top tier player like someone that wins worlds being able to design a figure the only like way that you could ruin that is if you ended up designing something that was like uh like the alternate version of riddler like a yeah. top hat and then like no one ever plays it and it's just a bad prime and you designed it poorly yeah. and it's just terrible and i don't know what you'd call a character like that but oh look at the time look oh. at the clock uh, it's time to move on um yeah right king let's get a move on in the show uh jeez <laughs> all right let's do some listener questions shall we there are dozens of us Warburg Jedi asks, how many clicks have you trashed? Countless amounts. Uh, at least an entire brick of Rise and Fall. And then all the Merry Marvels and Supermen. One case, I think, of Wonder Woman. Um, that's about... Oh, and then there was one time that I stomped a cyborg from Teen Titans set. Huh. It's not filmed. Oh, no, wait. I guess the Fantastic Four starter as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cosmic Clash starter. Can't forget that one. Double barreled barreled it happens to the best of them um now, i don't remember there's a lot more but i remember so me in. i know that like a lot of people have that like will be upset by like this knowledge but at a certain point figures that are commons and uncommons and also like six or seven years old are just 
worth almost nothing. Like even if they're not being bought like in mass by you can't even do like the five cent buy it uh oh, kind right. of thing from I'm like cool. cool stuff or that would normally yeah. buy stuff from you. Um if you're not able to sell them anymore, because at a certain point some of that stuff basically is not sellable, in my opinion. Like, you know, you you reach a point where a nickel just isn't worth the sale price. Like it's not worth the shipping. Oh, um, shipping, yeah, the weight of it. Yeah. Selling in mass. Yeah. So if you're yeah, if you're shipping, you know, and it costs ten dollars and you're only getting like fifteen, then you're basically not worth you it. Know, it's not worth it at that point. So if it reaches that point, I think it's fine to toss or like, I mean, obviously I try and hand them out to people at my local venues. I try and give them away as best I can. But if I buy five cases of a set and I have, you know, 12 liter from the mighty Thor, not the prime. Oh, the the, prime. Yeah. The non prime -prime leader. If I just have like seven of those, and, you know, there's like no three people in my local area that are like, yeah, I'll take one. And then I have four of those. And then I look them up online and people are like, yeah, I'll give you a nickel for it. And it costs me a dollar fifty to send it or whatever. He's just going in the trash. Uh, yeah, how have high. you trashed them? Personally, uh, I usually use them for mod fodder. I put them in a box. They go. They go into like. At some point, I'll cut these into like some sort of weird amalgamation of something. Um, and then, which is my favorite way? My favorite way is obviously um, you like repurposing them for you know some sort of D and D unspeakable horror that's got like several ten heads because leaders got like this giant forehead thing. So it's yeah. like a it's like the beholder, but instead uh-huh. of like eye tentacles, it's Oh, that's Giant terrifying. Peter Head, the Yikes. Um, I've trashed them a ton of different ways. Uh, the X-Men Rise and Fall opening, the boards, stepping, stomping, lots of several variations of stepping and stomping. Um, my, my favorite way to trash something is, by all means, you shotgun like it's skeets and just blowing it up. That's awesome. Uh, I love shooting stuff. One way some of you might not know is Iceman Booster. I don't know how obvious it was in Rise and Fall, but I was destroying them as if I was those X-Men characters. The Iceman booster, I tried to fr- realize my freezer did not get cold enough after leaving it in there for an hour to like ice it, and I was like, this is taking too long, and it just had a very small layer of ice over the top. That booster was submerged in water for like two hours. It was gross and soggy, and then I just bought a bag of ice across the street, and then I just smashed it. Egg of ice. That was probably my favorite way. And then watching like the ice obliterate on the sidewalk <laughs> is my favorite. Close second to the to a shotgun, but like that was yeah. hilarious. So I really enjoyed that. Luke okay. now asks new new question here. Ten of Swords. Now that you've played a few games with the figures, is there a figure you may have oversold to yourself? Someone who surprised you, Simeon. Uh, someone who surprised me. That's a that's a rough one because honestly. The only thing that really surprised me in X of Swords was the 50-point Fury. Because, like, for 50 Ah. points, I didn't think a running shot Psychic Blast 10 for 3 was really going to make a difference. And the fact that he can do that and then also just not die in one shot. Like, there's very few things in this set. Almost nothing in this set that can one-shot him. That was a really surprising figure. And then... Uh, See, that's the same answer, too. Yeah. The Battle Um, Royale we played, he was surprising. I'll say, like, the 100-point Magneto, the one time I played him, um, surprisingly goes down. Like, it goes down pathetically quick if your opponent has an outwit. And you should be able to outrange them and shoot it. But if your opponent's playing really safe and they know what they're doing, they'll be able to get rid of that Invincible and knock him to, like, some pretty mediocre quick clicks. Or, like Calder said, when he was playing and pulled, like, that Mystique, you just tie Magneto up with like something with plasticity that they can't really KO right away. And it just makes that hundred points almost worthless. So that is like the one, the one hundred point, you know, uh, what I would say like power uncommon power common kind of like situation where you have to really have a good team around him because if you run into the wrong kind of setup, you're, you're losing one third of your build pretty quick. That's pretty dang fair. Next up, we have 
Ooh, uh. What legacy cards are you hoping to see Batman team up set? So they get confirmed recently. We were a little iffy on whether or not they actually would be there. But now we know they are. So let's go yeah. one at a time, back and forth. I'm going to do a... I'm going to buy all of these. Everyone, Simeon and I say, I will be buying them. I'll be adding uh, to them to my card. I already own most of the, the ones I'm going to say. Okay. But... Oh, I'm going to buy them as well then. Okay. Ones that you already also own, I will also <laughs> buy. Uh, some of these I own too. So it's not that I'm totally like outing myself having to buy a bunch of these. But... um. Oh, them I already own. So if I own it, I'm not going to buy it. But if I don't own it, I'm going to buy it as this is our yeah. slash hero. We gamble with you. This is yeah, we're going to gamble yeah. with you. That way yeah. you know it's not totally unfounded. Yeah, we're, so we're For Batman team up, you. we've seen one legacy card so far. We haven't seen it. We've seen the words that Riddler is giving a legacy card. So we know a character. don't even know what figure it is technically. So none they of us are probably going to choose though, a Riddler. Right? They like they say a clue token. Clue say like token. a clue token, and then they mention him getting mission points. Did they sure. might mention perplex? I don't totally remember, but there's that. So I've chosen what is this? Seven figures here because I assume there's going to be eight, and there's one of them. So I've chosen seven figures. My first figure. This is my first guess. Is Batman the animated series zero zero one A Batman? I think the common animated series Batman. As a chance at getting legacy okay. carded, I could I could see that that one or the rare. Those are tangentially two. But I think if they don't want to have to do an equipment thing, the, that yeah, Batman has the sh- or not thing. out of the shadows. The what is he called? Batarang. He's a, the Batarang yeah, the one. Batarang rare. Yeah, yeah. It's a chance. The common Batman, pretty solid. Um, I'll go with my shot in the dark one because okay. while I want this figure to get remade, I feel like it's not super likely um but anyhow this is a uh, from the flash set the rare 046 harley quinn so okay i own this one so i don't have some, to buy it perfect some perfect. bad nicknames for this figure uh this yeah. is a champion design yeah. figure with sculpt and stuff so this is the the puddin Harley Quinn, where you once per game choose a friendly character with a higher point value. The chosen character is Harley Quinn's Puddin. Harley Quinn can use Perplex and Prob, but only to target her Puddin. When her Puddin is KO'd, modify all of Harley Quinn's combat values by plus one. She had the Sneak 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 trait, which is when she has no action token, she can do Sidestep. She had the Calculator Team ability, which is wild card. Um, special attack power that was Poison when she does if she's adjacent to only one opposing, ca- opposing character the damage dealt was Penetrating. And then she had two clicks, first and last click, were combat reflexes and super senses. Otherwise, she had either super senses on click okay. two or combat reflexes on click three and four. Two point values. I love that Harley um, Quinn so much. 65 so points. I feel like I can still play this. Like, I have still played this figure at 65 I think so. points. Um, although, like, if they dropped it to, like, 45, this becomes, like, a very potential, like, I play on teams kind of figure. Arkham Asylum, Gotham City Sirens, Gotham City Underworld, Scientist, Secret Six, Suicide Squad. If they make that bottom dial like 20 points, this is a solid suit. Secret Six, I add in. So, yeah, I just, I really like this right. figure. I think when it comes to Batman related figures that like really stand out to me, this is one that I'm obviously just like, yeah. this is something that makes sense. So, my next pick is also from the Flash set, and this is Flash 045 Rare, Etrigan the Demon. Um, Ooh, I'm choosing Don, this Don one. The form of man. Exactly. On the Demon, Etrigan. You know, he's, he's a rhyming guy. It's yeah. a rough rhyme, but he's a rhyming guy. He's yeah, rhyming he demon rhymes. here. He spits some mad bars, basically. Uh, no, so I like Etrigan the Demon a lot as a character. I'm choosing this one over the World's Finest one, because the World's Finest one has two different figures to go between, Jason Blood and then Etrigan. Sculpt is number one, better sculpt. Number two, all on its one dial, it has a four click long Jason Blood dial and then a six click long Etrigan the Demon dial that he can switch between independently of having to make another legacy card for Jason Blood. So I think it'd be solid. I think an Etrigan the Demon, I think people would love a, a legacy card for Etrigan here. I think this is already a solid Etrigan. At 135, though, for it being a power action to go from terrible Jason Blood to 
better Make at Trigan the Demon. Yeah. Make it a free action. You know, he also has pretty low defense values, except for on his last click of his Etrigan dial. He's got a 19 mm-hmm. to nowhere. So I think there's a lot you can add to him. Make his point value a little lower. Make it a free action. Um, give him some give him some good stuff. He's already really solid. No. Give Flurry. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. Just saying. Yeah, give him a um, living legend yeah. trait. Yeah, give him Living Legend. Not uh, giving called Luke, that, but... Uh, or at least, like, yeah, in a way. Something no, like... When, I mean, well, the, the same when he dies the, uh, as yeah. Jason Blood, he does get to go to click one already. Right. Etrigan, when he so dies, this he is dies a little as little Jason Blood. Make him Jason Blood, yeah. Make him Jason Blood or something like that, you know. But I, I think this is a solid pick. Flash 045. Etrigan the Demon. Yeah, I do like that pick. I, I, that's a character we don't get enough of, and he's he's a two dollar nineteen cents. Character adding him to the DC. cart right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's so great. All right. All right. Um, your your next pick, Simeon. This is a purely speculative um, character that I I have several of, and I really hope that it's remade because I just think it's got a cool effect. So this is the Harley Quinn zero thirty uncommon Robin. So. This is Thrill Killer 62, Robin. Mm, so okay. He's got charge, 11 for 3, 40 points. Pretty decent stats for 40 points, honestly. I don't know why more people didn't play him. But then also, in addition to all of that, like he also has two lightning bolts, which makes him even better in the new rules because he didn't have Indom, and he's got two lightning bolts, so you could charge, target two people. Um, also like charge twice in a row without taking pushing. But when any character is KO'd by an attack, after resolutions remove an action token from Robin, and then his second tra- uh, trait was hunting vengeance for Robin. When Robin is KO'd, give an action token to each opposing character within six squares. Oh, wow. So okay, really liked both of these. Uh, like both of these traits. That's all he has. He has sidestep and close combat expert on clicks three through five. And then just combat reflexes the rest of his dial. But this is a uh, good old Rickard Grawstark. Oh, classic Rickard you know, Grawstark. The, the, the most guy. The famous Robin. Rickard yeah. Grawstark. Literally only only this Robin. Only in either the, the Fast Forces from Harley Quinn or the specific Thrill Killer one. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's one of my favorite uh, versions of Robin. Because it's a very specific version of Robin. But then it also does something very unique, and uh, also dual wielding, dual wielding pistols, which is pretty fun. The cooler things Robin can do. Yeah, yeah. All right, opt Robin here. My next pick. I think everybody can probably agree that this one needs to be legacy carded. Joker's Wild zero thirty five Killer Moth. Oh, I was okay. part of the group of people that wanted a Killer Moth made. I like Killer Moth. He's a funny, goofy villain. Um, and when we finally got a Killer Moth, he was really, really bad. So maybe that's yeah. just desserts. I don't know. He's 65 points, five clicks long. He has an opening nine attack with incapacitate, running shot with five range. Um, he's really bad. He has no traits. He has no special powers. So now is a perfect time to give him a trait. He can't obviously add a power, but um, he's weird, 65 points. In Joker's so Wild, bad. they had the, like, this is how I fight the bat yeah how i deal with the bat i guess killer moth doesn't yeah terrible they all had that trait and then killer moth just didn't he just did he was purely there to use that trait for other people to get rid of his nine disgusting nine attack i think we add some either we just take off straight up 35 points and make him a 30 point character in which case i will accept that i will accept that dial for 30 points instead of 65 or we can add a fun killer moth trait to killer moth so I already own this Killer Moth. I've owned him for years. I have played him once. I hope to play him again in the future. But yeah, that is my pick for Legacy Card. I think he'd be great. Alright. My next one. Uh, this comes from the Batman TV series. So, number 011. He's a rare. The Mad Hatter. Uh, so, oh. he's got a bunch of stuff going on. So, they obviously, they all had Elaborate Death Trap and Escape Death Trap, which I won't go into those because I think they can just wholesale get rid of those um you know his are kind of cool uh the things that i really like about him is he's got the super fast hardening plaster mad hatter can use elaborate death trap ability and the bonus is equal to the highest click number showing among opposing characters that made his death traps actually interesting but i think you could just rename this and give him like plasticity because it's super fast hardening plaster um right. i think that's a solid option traded plasticity maybe 
not necessarily traded shape change, but like something like improved movement would make him better. Uh, and then his special speed power is instant mesmerizing device, Zzzt, which is a sound effect okay. that he has above his head. It says, when the Mad Hatter resolves a move action, place a Zzzt token on this card. Give Mad Hatter a free action and remove a Zzzt token to use mind control normally this turn. You may choose to remove two tokens to use it as free action instead. And then his special attack power for his first three clicks with that special speed power is my hats make me superior. When compared from a common surface, if the highest point of the Mad Hatter sculpt is above the highest point of the sculpt of any character he targets with an attack, modify mm. Mad Hatter's attack value by mm. plus three. So, I mean, he's old sculpt though. Because, so short. Yeah, because he's old sculpt and because of the new sculpt size, he needs a legacy card to fix his shortness. He needs he needs a legacy how card. We, how? To, uh, how? If you put three action tokens under him. When when measured from four quarters above, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know how exactly they would do this. Uh, when compared if... from a common surface, like when when compared from like the map surface, the highest point. So like if he has one action token, he's on the highest elevation. He's still he still is a tall sculpt. Even yeah, he like, is, but like he, he used to be quite a bit taller than most other sculpts. Yeah. Um, or if it was like when, like you know, choose a friendly character when that character is compared from a common surface. Oh, there you so go. So like Mad Hatter could use like I don't know. Oh, how did okay? Or how's this maybe Simeon? sideline you could Galactus. give them a hat token, and then now that they're wearing the Mad Hatter, you compare their size or something like that. Sure. Right? Yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, okay. he's he's a, just a fun piece. He's four range, two lightning bolts, forty five points. I think we make him twenty five points. Keep most of his stuff the same. Uh, you know, if you really want to get into like the elaborate death trap and escape death trap, yeah. you can. But like, I think we just for the sake of uh, for, the, for the sake of sanity, um, we just don't get into that. Um, all right. With legacy cards, but yeah. I, uh, my next pick is going to be from the Batman set, 031. It's going to be Alfred Pennyworth. I feel like an Alfred should be made. I didn't want to choose another yeah. animated figure. I think from the set, simply titled Batman, this is a solid pick. He just has a very basic dial. His first two clicks is Perplex, and then his last three on his four-click dial, he has Field Medic Stage Training. For 42 points, it's a rough dial. Um, he does give him Shape Change. So Stage Training is Shape Change and Support. When he uses support, he can cheat friendly characters in four squares in line of fire as if they were adjacent and increases the damage healed by plus one for each action token on the target. I don't know what Alfred is throwing at you that he can heal within four squares, but I like it, and I've always enjoyed that part of his little field medic stage training type of thing, throwing band-aids at you or whatever. So make it not 42 points, a little bit cheaper. Maybe have the same type vibe. Maybe give Alfred a trait, some combat reflexes maybe to help his 16 defenses. Um, could be solid. But yeah, I like old Alfred Pennyworth here, and I think an Alfred Pennyworth is a is a good idea for a legacy card. Yeah. To go along with that, the kind of support uh, Batman family kind of figures, um, I went with the DC 10th Anniversary set, 017 Ooh. Oracle. So okay. One, okay. I just really love this sculpt. It's Oracle in front of like a bunch of monitor screens. Uh, really cool sculpt. Batman ally team ability, 73 points, zero range, one lightning bolt. Batman family, Birds of Prey, Gotham City, Justice League, and Martial Artist, which I, I don't know. Is, is old Babs a martial artist at this point in her career? I don't think so. But <laughs> she's got... A trait that is, my eyes are everywhere. If Oracle is not adjacent to an opposing character and is neither the in her starting area or on elevated train, uh, or is either in her starting area or on elevated train, she can draw lines of fire and count range and squares from any square of any single Ooh. friendly character that has the Batman family, Birds of Prey, or Justice League keywords. So just let her lets her like have like full map kind of uh, right. range. You know, as she can draw a line of fire from like friendlies and stuff, uh, basically gives her full map reach for her support stuff. So she has 
willpower on click one, two clicks of combat reflexes, willpower on click four, and then click five, uh, no dan- no defense power. And then her full five clicks, she has a special damage power, no attack power, no speed power. She's not doing a whole lot. I would give her, like, sidestep traded. Uh, she already has Batman ally, so she's got stealth. Maybe a smoke cloud. But then she has the mystery of the oracle as her special damage power, and that is... Give her a power action, choose Outwit, Perplex, or Probability Control. She can use the chosen power until the beginning of your next turn. I would change this one. I would make her point cost like 30, because 73 is quite a bit. Um, And then I would make this either a free action or power, like choose two. Because I feel like paying a power action, taking one of your action totals away to get a free action is pretty weak, even though she can use it through a bunch of stuff. But, uh, no, I, I really like this Oracle. I've used her multiple times on Batman family teams. And uh, she works out pretty well. Um, you know, Batman family, Birds of Prey, Justice League. I would give her traded sidestep, reduce her points by a little over half, and then make part of her trait or part of her special damage power either a free action or, like, gets to pick two powers. Because there's a lot of support figures for, like, 30 points that have two of the big support powers, right? So why is she doing a power right. action to get one? Like, yeah, she, yeah. Dude, she can get two. But no, it's, it's mostly because the sculpt. I always thought that like the the screens were really cool. All the monitors were really cool. I think it's a great sculpt for good yeah. old Babs. I agree. I concur. I concur. I was going to put an Oracle on my list originally. I did not. Um, I substituted. I realized I had a, you know, Alfred Pennyworth was my support guy. So... Moving on, the rest of these are pseudo villains. Um, next up is from 75th anniversary, 057, the super rare Bane. Oh, I think yeah. it'd be awesome. This is Bane. He has Batman in his sculpt, and he's doing the classic breaking the bat. He's destroying his back over his. Yeah, I almost did that one as well. Sculpt. See, and I think this would be such a great, such a great figure. He has an eight click long dial, 140 points. He needs a legacy card. He's seven speed charge, ten attack with nothing, sixteen defense, toughness, top dial like this right here. That's not Bane, and he ramps up a little bit. He's got kind of more some like outwit stuff. I didn't know, I didn't know this. Bane's got a photographic memory. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, he can also ignore stealth. When he uses outwit. He's, He's got like the whole breaking the bat trait, which is really neat. If he they have the Batman ally team ability, he can outwit two powers, which is really cool. He's got the Venom Pump special power for his first six clicks of life on his eight click long dial, which is great. So, yeah, I think this would be an awesome Bane. I think an iconic moment from comics when Batman gets his bat back broken. Excuse me. So, yeah, this is this is what made me choose this Bane over others. So, yeah, I think this would be a great Bane. He's eight ninety nine on Cool Stuff, Inc. Other people have him for twenty dollars, which is ridiculous. Jeez, and also, for man. some reason, Cool Stuff Inc. also has the Joker's Wild Bane for eight ninety nine. So I guess Bane is just an eight ninety nine type character. Yeah. I don't know. Also, this Bane the has the Wild One is also sword. really good in the. Oh, he's great too. Play. He's great. Sculpt, but that's uh, great. Yeah. By the way, this Bane has the Secret Six keyword for whatever reason. So also just to add addition to some more, <laughs> some more flavor for Secret Six teams. What, you know, a, what an odd sub theme for the legacy cards. They're all just no. six oh. characters. Oh, what is how this? weird! Scandal Savage. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Oh yikes. So to go with to go with a more prominent, I think, in Bat Comics kind of flair character than Bane, because Bane's pretty prominent. He did like a big thing that one time. But if you did want somebody yeah. that like a recurring villain that really pushed Batman to his limits over and over again. Uh, it's good old. It's Mitchell Mayo. Calder, do you know? Do you know Mitchell Mayo? Oh, this Mayo? is a joke. Oh, okay, good. This is a joke. All right. It's Condiment. Was, King. No, I don't know who. I don't know Mitchell. Oh, of course. <laughs> Condiment King, the I mean, world's finest, number zero thirty-eight. He's a rare running shot, incapacitate, five range, two lightning bolts. He has a trait. Why are all of you laughing so hard? Unique modifier. Adjacent opposing characters modify their attack values minus one. Opposing characters modify their attack values. Minus one when attacking Condiment King. So double minus one when attacking I believe King. you're going to make me buy Condiment King. <laughs> Unique this. modifier. Characters can only mo- be modified by one effect of this name. So I think we get a ri- we get rid of that unique modifier part. Uh, I think his p- 
poor 16 defense deserves to have both of these boosted to minus two. And, uh, you know, rule of three okay. will apply, obviously. But I, I think he's getting hit most of the time. So that's his click one is running shot in cap, 16, no defense, one damage, no damage power, 50 points. On his second through fifth click, so his second click to his last click, he has a special attack or speed power, uh, which is slippery ketchup and mustard sprays. Condiment King can use force blast and plasticity. I think we give him force blast as free. Um, I also think we give him, like, I don't know, Make him like do something interesting with that force blast. Like uh, if he successfully does it, he gets to like choose or no, it's not successful. Force blast just happens. So let him choose a uh, direction, and um, I don't know, maybe okay. like double his like force blast. So like he could do like a a line of ketchup and mustard sprays right. or something to like slip yeah. somebody you know six squares. Or past really, him. or also, really mess you up that mustard in your eye. For five clicks, I say we we reevaluate his point cost and we uh we make him twenty five points instead of fifty. Oh gosh, Simeon. because he he ends with a nine for zero damage, and he's got close bad. combat expert, so he's technically a ten for one now on those last two clicks, and that's bad. So honestly, this guy is he needs some help. He needs a lot of uh, help with either another trait or you know we could even add like some extra could do like some relish uh trait i hate uh, you we could do some hot peppers some glizzy sauce i don't know no whatever, no whatever, please whatever, no whatever oh. condiments this guy's missing don't give condiment king a glizzy trait i'll die please don't do that <laughs> so already oh, got God. the mayo the ketchup the mustard uh i don't know there's plenty of condiments for him to like reach in his bag of tricks and grab and i i just feel bad because you know he's got so few okay um, I think it would be funny though to put a wacky character like that in there. Obviously, he's such a huge role in Batman comics, so much more than Bane ever has. Um, he oh, yeah. deserves to get a legacy card, he deserves a legacy. Literally, card. brought yeah. Bruce Wayne to like his knees. Oh my over gosh, how, how tasty that hot dog was that he delivered to him! Uh, yeah, <laughs> broke goat, Batman, Glizzy, Glizzy Guzzler. Oh, I can't yeah. even say it's so stupid. Okay, All right, um, <laughs> so yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we my next pick is going to be this is a little different. I think it'd be really fun because I really like the sculpt at Zaro. Um, the Justice at 039 rare bat Zaro oh, is okay. a nice 69 points. I don't see why that has to change. Just add some traits to him. I don't know if this is on purpose from HC Realms or if it is a joke, but his special damage power is labeled as a special movement power, um, but it's his useless belt. Which is perplexed, but he can only modify combat values by a negative one. He has a dial that is the exact same. So he's got two clicks, and then the stats change, but it's Leap Climb, Smoke Cloud, ESD, Outwit, and then it's Stealth, Energy Explosion, Willpower with the special damage. And then it just rotates between those two for his six click dial. He's got Batman Enemy, he's got six range. And apparently, January 15th of 2009, he was a lot better after the rules change. <laughs> I'd play him infinitely more now. I don't know what the rules changed in January 15th of 2009, but he got infinitely better then, so let's make him infinitely better now. Um, at Zaro is a fun pick. He's at Cool Stuff Inc. for only 30 cents, I think. 30, 40 cents. I just added him to the cart. I'm only going to buy one, so if you wish to buy the other two, go for it. I feel confident. Now, this is without a card. Uh, the ones with a card are sold out, so we don't need that. We need that sweet, sweet legacy card. That's all we need, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so, we don't uh, need the main card. So yeah, exactly. His real name is unrevealed. That's so fun. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, he's got chains in his thing. The bat logo Definitely is not. upside down. Uh, Bruce Bane. Bruce Wayne or something weird. Yeah, yeah I don't definitely know. not that. And he all he has is the detective keyword, Simeon. Oh, so, some more keywords yeah, too. Is... Maybe a trait, something fun. He he yeah. am best detective or something. He am best detective. He am world's worst detective yeah outwit so i'm sure, I'm sure yeah. that's yeah is that his flavor it's willpower text? yeah it's just, that's flavor text yeah. uh okay. his energy explosion is this no explode this no bat zaro yeah. is just gaslighting me but okay uh his smoke <laughs> cloud is fresh air <laughs> dang dude yeah i think bat zaro would be a really fun legacy card pick all right all right 
from the dark and dirty streets of Gotham. Got the cool. the uncommon zero two zero calendar man. Not only oh. is it one of the the more fun rogue gallery sculpts. Um, good old calendar man holding a calendar. The tattoos across his head. Fifty two points for fifty two weeks in the year. He's got four range, one lightning bolt, four clicks long. Uh, you know, none of that has to do anything with days of the week, sadly. Um, he has the Batman enemy team ability. He has a special speed power for his first four clicks, his only four clicks, his whole dial. Uh, special attack power for his first three clicks, and then a special damage power for his first two clicks. So his special speed power is Calendar Man can use stealth. When, this, when the game begins on a day with an even number, day of the month, Give Calendar Man oh a power action. Have the speed value and range value of a target opposing character until the beginning of your next turn. When the game begins on a day with an odd number day of the month, give Calendar Man a power action. Up to three friendly characters adjacent to him can use phasing teleport until the beginning of your next turn. I would like to see this changed to free actions and also um, increases range to like something much better than four. Uh, his special attack power. I just think it'd be funny, like if you know that like the world's finals is on like an odd number. Oh, so true. And yeah. You're like, Ugh, to play him, I must play him on an even day to like qualify. But then I will have like the the advantage by playing him on an odd day because I will give all. Oh, the there you go. I, I don't <laughs> know. Is. Just something silly like that. Um, Weekend of Warriors is it. a special attack power. Calendar Man can use Energy Explosion. When the game begins on a Monday through Thursday, Calendar Man can use Outwit. When he counters an ability, he counters that ability on all opposing characters. When the game begins on a Friday through Sunday, modify attack value of friendly characters adjacent to Calendar Man by plus one. I'd like to see this be a little bit more fun. I love. I um, like it, though. Yeah, like add some stuff. So, like, you know, a different power for every day of the week. Like, I think okay. this guy's really fun to play because... The amount of venues I've been to that play on different like weekdays, you know, like Monday through Thursday or right. Friday through Sunday, makes like this one character do completely different things depending on what day I play him. Uh, and then his special damage power, so he has Mastermind his whole dial, sixteen and fifteen defenses, not great. Special damage power is can use, he can use probability control, give him a power action to roll a d6. When the battle begins during the winter or spring, which My gosh. is heavily debated, uh, <laughs> a result of five oh, or six, no, it's give like him the an action token. Though, right? uh, yeah. yeah, there's the solstices and the. If you use the solstices the, yeah. to guarantee. Solstice Where does it say that in the, the Calendar Man rules? Simeon, someone's going to have this figure, <laughs> and they're going to be like, "What does it say exactly?" Uh, the farmer's ultimax says the. Yeah. Oh god. Says the winter won't actually begin until. Blah, blah, blah. The arguments yeah. this may cause, goodness gracious. Uh, on the result of a 5-6, give an action token to an opposing character within 10 squares and adjacent to or holding an object. When the battle begins during the summer or fall on a result of 5-6, deal one penetrating damage to an opposing character within 10 squares and adjacent to or holding an object. So, obviously, like you could include equipped with object as well in this. Um don't make it a power action. Give him a free action to do this because it's so silly. I think you have to keep his point value at fifty-two, though. I think I think that's uh, that's a forced thing. I don't think you can make his point value go down anymore. So maybe since he doesn't actually have a trait, maybe you give him a trait where it's oh okay. You know, if played at nationals, Hero Clicks nationals, uh, he gets this. If played at Hero Clicks worlds, he gets that. Like. Give him some bonus for uh, the specific event date that he's playing on. Like, I mean, Nationals is usually in, uh, what, September? No, uh, July. It's in September. Oh, Nationals is in July or June. Yeah, and then uh, Worlds is no, usually in September. Um, something like that. Like, you know, you give him, like, a specific trait for each month out of the year. Or just, like, if you're playing this figure <laughs> okay. on a holiday, you get plus two to stats because he's got pretty pathetic stats so even that wouldn't be too bad but no right. he's just stupid he's fun um he does something that no other character really does which is like very specific days of the week or types of year you have to like quite literally argue with your opponent like 
You know. Love it. It's winter. Oh, it's so There's good. snow on the ground. No, okay. it's March. That means it's technically spring. I don't know. Oh, goodness. That'd be so funny. I, I'm i here for it. I'm here for it at the highest competitive. You should make it as competitive as possible with kids if you make Captain <laughs> Man a legacy card. Bring so back. you can have make these, these judge together. questions that are this. would be hilarious. Uh, all right. My last legacy card pick. Since I realized what I was missing was a random, obscure, non-carded figure. I've chosen that. Hyper Time. I have 039, the veteran, Pat Woman. Um, yeah, I don't know. I figured I had to choose at least one figure that doesn't have a card. Since typically, there's a non carded figure. And since the first figure I thought of that should get a legacy card was Catwoman for a Batman set, the ones I want the most are non carded figures. Right? So, like Captain America, Forge, etc. Even though they have versions that have cards. Um, it seems the ones I like the most are always non-carded. Well, I guess that's not true. She-Hulk and Piledriver and stuff were head cards. But anyways, I figured we're going to choose the veteran Catwoman. She is a full dial of Leap Climb. She has three clicks of in-cap. She has three clicks of Super Senses and Outwit. And then the rest of her dial is just Smoke Cloud. So give her some stuff um, that makes her useful. Because according to Batarang96 and February 14th, <laughs> on Valentine's Day of 2010, he said this. He said, terrible useless for about seven clicks i mean you want to guess how long catwoman's dial is uh eight clicks oh it's seven clicks long he's saying <laughs> she's useless her entire life she's useless so to spit in the face of battery egg 96 whiz kids let's make her useful for at least six clicks of life please and i feel like um, commenting that on i feel like commenting that on february 14th it's a so very mean. lonely year for that that oh. poor guy. Especially, yeah, that's what I think. That's what he's doing. You're, this is what how you're spending yeah. your February 14th. Interesting. Like Though me. I don't know if Dark My Saber is much better. Me, so I'm um, going to make bad comments on, on December 31st of 2006. So New Year's Eve of 2006, Darth Saber said an underrated figure. <laughs> so there you go. And then on January 1st. The day after, 2007, Urshima says, great for three clicks, ARP for four, yeah, I don't that's, understand that's Smoke up. Cloud. Yeah, that's up from four it clicks. Is, it is up. Then, you know, February 14th, Heartbroken Batarang 96, three years later, has to say terrible, useless for seven clicks. What a guy. What a rude, rude <laughs> little man. Uh, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is the Catwoman we get for a legacy card then, after that uh, emotional roller coaster. All right, Simeon. Yeah. Now I'm What's just up? hoping What's there's some, card? you know, we got we got a couple good comments on this figure, so I'll read the comments first. We got some some notables. Okay. We got good old Hojibo, which I know you've seen around uh, right. old HD realms. Hojibo's got two uh, comments on this character, December seventeenth, twenty fourteen. Um, and then we've got Hellboy, the Bellboy. We've got Doctor Z. Which I don't know what that's exactly Ooh. in reference to, but Doctor Z, uh, curly insane guy, last good emperor. There's some good comments. Uh, but this is from the Batman Streets of Gotham set. So last two characters, Calendar Man and Mister Zaz, okay. both from the same set. This is a rare from Streets of Gotham. Uh, this is the only Zaz we've ever had. Not just Mister Zaz. This is the only Zaz they've ever made. Uh, and I think he's a fairly interesting character. He's mostly just like a psycho murderer dude. But as he's far as so like Batman bad. villains like go, kind of interesting. Az is that what it is? Yeah, right. He, he just like carves like how many people he's killed into his skin, so he's got all these tally marks. Um, doesn't make him any stronger or anything. It just like makes you be like, oh, and like, he's killed quite a few people. Uh, so he has one trait. He's five clicks long. One trait: counting coup. Every or each time Mr. Zaz damages an opposing character, place a tally token on Mr. Zaz's card. When he makes an attack, you may remove one tally token and modify his damage value by plus one, or remove two tally tokens and have damage dealt from the attack be penetrating. So neither of these options is super good because his first two clicks are stealth with a nine attack and blades. Uh, he has one damage on click one, two damage on click two. Then clicks three through five, he has uh, exploit weakness, so you don't really need to remove more than one because he is already dealing pen damage. And then he has uh, flurry on clicks three and four, and 
a 10 attack on click 3, a 9 attack on click 4, an 8 attack on click 5. He's got a rough dial. Yeah. This is a, a really rough dial, and I think it would take the top minds at WizKids to make this guy's dial better. He has 45 points for essentially a tie-up piece. He's almost never going to hit. Uh, when he finally does, he can increase his damage, but he can never increase his attack, so I'd really like to find a way for him to increase his attack, either with the the coup tokens, the counting tokens, um, and the tally mark tokens, whatever. I think that would be really cool. I think it'd be cool to do like some sort of free action, uh, similar to like speed tokens, where you can cash them in to do other things. I, like obviously, we can't make Mister Zaz too powerful because he is just a dude with a knife. But right, um, yeah, and yeah. I think crazy. it'd be cool to like to make him a more interesting version of himself, and potentially like a scarier version. Because yeah. Like this guy can't even he can't even beat up Aunt May for forty five points with what he's got right now. Like he's got to be pretty lucky. Sad. And, uh, yeah. Since we know Aunt May is getting a new figure, you know he's got to be able to at least beat up Aunt May. <laughs> yeah. Beat um, those are our legacy card picks. Uh, some of them were out of stock. So I'll be. These are these are the ones I'm I'm currently going to be able to buy. Etchkin the Demon, Alfred Pennyworth, uh, the Catwoman. Some of Simeon's I own. Some of mine I own. You got um, the Mad Hatter? Bane. I own the Mad Hatter. Okay. I own that Harley Quinn. I couldn't get Calendar Man or Zaz, which I'm bummed about. Uh, Calendar it's the Man rest, is shall see. higher on my list than Zaz. Uh, yeah. Mad Hatter, Calendar Man. I already own Oracle. But it would be you couldn't those get two Oracle first, either, but I'm then, pretty sure I own an Oracle. I think so. I, I think Mal, or uh, Condiment Man, King. I almost said Molecule Man, Condiment King, a uh, different kind of uh, matter manipulator. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that's what you want to call it, Condiment sure. King, okay. matter manipulator in his own right. Clearly, uh, I don't own him, even though he's only a world. Oh, Simeon. Oh man, I just hope they do like all the goofy. Uh, That's what I want. Either to. they do the goofy ones, or they do the best versions of the like Batman villains, because there's some really good versions, and then there's you know like 17 Jokers that are not worth even uh, looking not good at. at all. Yeah, yeah, some terrible ones. All right, moving on, guys. We have Luke asking, "Gosh, would you rather pay four hundred dollars for a single grand prize board game miniature, or?" A, a street vagrant, $100, to steal it for you, and everything else the person has on them, and then treat yourself to a nice dinner. Hmm. I'd Stealing is wrong. I'd pay four street vagrants $25 to steal it for me, and then I would take all four of them out to a nice dinner. Dinner? That's, that's the correct answer, I think. I this trolley problem. have never, and I will never, pay $400 for a single anything from this game. Yeah, I'm not, not dishing happen. on anyone that does, but man, is that like just a that's a high ticket thing when you know it's gonna be. So this is this is in reference to the grand prizes from uh, the X of Swords organized play, because there's so few. The ones that were released at Gen Con have gone for quite a bit, uh, roughly upwards of like three hundred some dollars to four hundred some dollars personally. Because it's not even remotely close to being legal yet, there is zero reason why you should ever pay that much for a figure. Uh, if you just have that money to burn, great, that's fine. If you have that figure to sell, even better, good for you. Uh, if you're wondering, like, what is that figure worth to the average person? It's not that. It's closer to like fifty or seventy-five. And if you're going to try and argue and say that it'll like top out around like 200, it'll be at 200 for quite a while. You are wrong, and you are you are making the game worse by saying that and perpetuating that kind of idea. And I will stand by that. If you want to say that the Apocalypse or Genesis grand prize figures should stay at 200 or will stay at 200 after Worlds and after several states and several venues hold these events. You are perpetuating a bad mark for this this game by putting that price out in people's heads. Just don't do that. It's That's rough. bad. It's really rough. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like when people no. do that. 
I think Quinn it's Jet didn't stay at that price. Deadpool Jet oh. didn't stay at that price. Titano didn't stay oh. at that price. I mean, we could go all the way back to like War of Light stuff didn't stay at that price. Uh, oh. The chases from War of Light did, but those yeah, weren't grand prizes. Those weren't grand prizes. Oh. Necron didn't stay at that price. Oh, he arguably. I mean, he might even have started around the that. The biggest price. grand prize, like the first big grand prize event, Galactus didn't stay at that price. No, no, no you can still no. like. He he might have been at that price for a couple years, but no. Like we, you, you gotta be honest no. with yourself, and you gotta be honest with like the community. Uh, being able to choose one of two, and I don't know what the grand prize is if they come with two of each, or what exactly they come with. Uh, but they should not stay at two hundred dollars after like multiple venues are dropping them, yeah. and. Uh, You'll be fooling yourself if you don't think WizKids will like release them in other forms and they fashions. Go down. Like it's just, yeah, that's silly. Um, I don't think anything in this game should be around the two hundred dollar mark. Obviously, there's some things that will be because they're just really, right. yeah, really good. Uh, but one of these figures will edge out the other, and the other will drop to like seventy five, sixty, and the. The one that's a little bit better in competitive circles will be like closer to like 150, 175, maybe. Right. But even then, even then, yeah. like we're we're overpaying for that. So, right. So yeah, I'll Except pay Adam I'll pay R. vagrants every week to beat oh, people yeah, up and say that's these right. things. Vagrants. I'm with vagrants. Yeah. Uh, all right. Adamar says there are stereotypical players who show up no matter where you play. So he says the Time Lord. I'm gonna call it what it is. Uh, the slow player who takes forever to complete your turn. Mad scientist who always plays crazy experimental builds. The power player exclusively uses the latest hot meta nonsense. What other stereotypes have you encountered who are the most and least fun to play against? So least fun to play against for me personally is, I don't know, the mansplainer. I don't want to say that. I don't want to make it a sexist <laughs> thing. But the, the over-explainer, the person who says what they think I'm going to do on their turn. Sure. What they think I'm going to do on my turn. Like, shut up. You don't know my brain. You didn't see my Hogwarts personality test you can't guess every move I'm gonna make. Don't think you're so smart. Yeah. It's like your uh, supercomputer can't predict probably my, do this. my plays because I'm too I, dumb to make the best plays. Yeah, yeah. It's like don't try to taskmaster me, photographic <laughs> reflexes to mimic exactly what I'm gonna yeah. do. You don't know. I'm a wild the reason card. Reason taskmaster maybe. can't beat Deadpool because exactly. Too Thank you. It's to too dumb. Hard. Yeah. Trust me. I don't even know what my next play is. <laughs> don't don't pretend you know. That's my least favorite. Um, the staller or slow player is another bad one. Um, yeah. My least favorite is the people that try to tell me like what they think I'm going to do on my next turn. Like, hey, keep that inside your head. If you want to be like, oh, if I move here, he might pen blast me. Sure, keep that inside your head. Don't don't say that to me, All right, yeah. buddy? Yeah. Uh, my least favorite That's one I don't like, and I, I don't see it very often, but I, I've run across it in a few different times. Uh, it's the, like the ragers. So there, there is times where people get a little hot and heavy about uh, losing a figure, and I get it. You you built a team. You want to be able to experience that team. You want to like dominate your opponent opponents, and you want to have fun, whatever. Uh, but if I see a piece that's got like some crazy potential thing that it can do, like you know, let's say uh, Dracula from Fear itself, I'm not gonna like give you the chance to pop off with that. Usually, uh, my goal is to eliminate the biggest threat right away and so if i do that and then they just go all like rage and or they like you know do the opposite of rage and they just like shut down and they don't want to play the game anymore um those two things are just really like lose it for me uh there's a reason i like casual and it's because most of the time i can just play like really relaxed and i don't have to worry about like taking out like a big crazy figure but when I do, if my opponent just, like, shuts down or if they, like, rage right. out and they're just like, you know, start slamming the table, that kind of thing, that's bad. Uh, and then also the dice swapper. The, you know, oh, this, like, so bad. a lot of people do this, and I don't want to I don't want to tear it down too much because it's just, like, superstition. But um, if you're just, like, rolling, like, six and sevens and they're just not connecting because your opponent has, like, some high defenses or they're lowering your attack value somehow or something like they're playing like high defense kind of like turtle team whatever uh swapping out your dice a hundred times is not gonna like make you hit better yeah it's just you know i i'll give you like a once per matter. game swap like uh, i'm gonna switch these if they've been going cold but like if you swap multiple pairs of dice in one game it's like dude stop 
stick with Unless one. Unless you're switching gonna be them for loaded lows, dice, then like it doesn't make any yeah. sense. It what literally do you expect to happen? does not make a difference. Uh, like, especially if it's like the same exact. If you're switching rounded corners for rounded uh, corners, that's like, dumb. Yeah, you know, switch from rounded corners to square dice, or from square dice to rounded corners. Do do something right. that actually changes the shape, because like then I'll maybe be like, oh yeah, they'll bounce different, but statistically it does nothing for your chances all right next up tmcc 0000 the next spider-man set coming out what multiverse spiders are you hoping to see maybe a convention leo pardon from the 70s japanese show well obviously tmcc number one spider-man i need is turkish spider-man who makes spider clone bystanders and jumps out of the shadows and stabs people turkish (laughs) spider-man is the only spider-man i need and then second to that, the 1602 Spider-Man to flesh out just the 1602 oh, yeah. universe. The 1602 I would really universe. like more 1602 stuff. It's good. Um, yeah. But yeah, those are my picks. good comic series. Yeah, um, good stuff. I really want like I, so I had I had two opinions. This was mostly spawned out of having uh, something that brings detective to the Spider family. Uh, yeah, this detective keyword. So one. With the new Spider-Man set, I really hope the chase theme continues with WizKids doing their own versions, like the brand new versions of other like Spider-Men. Um, if you didn't know, Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage set, all of those were WizKids creations, so there is no uh, Leonardo da Venom or Spider-Man 1776 or Miles right. Miles West in the comics yet. There could be at some point, but Marvel let WizKids design those figures, so that was pretty cool. I really hope they get to do that again, and I'd really like to either see a um, an Elliot Ness like no Spider Man Noir version, which would be like Noir. I Ness too want to see my cousin Sp- in Spider Ness. I agree, Simeon. Yeah, I agree. Something like that. Yeah, good old good old Parker Ness. Uh, yeah, or I Here guess Peter Ness. Would, <laughs> oh, Parker. don't we two definitely don't names. want it to be Peter Ness? Good old Johnny Dot Ness does not look good. Um, <laughs> good. Either oh. that or uh, a Sherlock Holmes, which would be like Spider Holmes. I think is fine. Or uh, let's see, Sherlock Man. Uh, Sher- yeah, Sherlock I Spider. Uh, uh, Spider. out Sher- a Mary Jane uh, Watson bystander. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, he's already got his Watson, so I I really yeah. think that's an awesome one. Um, one of my favorite sculpts is Data from Star Trek as Sherlock. Oh Holmes. yeah, he's got his little magnifying glass with actual like little piece of glass in it. I think that's one of like my favorite sculpts of all time, and it's a really fun figure. I think if they do like clue tokens and stuff in the DC set, maybe the Spider Man set also does clue tokens. I don't know. You know, do a little detective sub theme. Um, but no, I I think those would be my top two. If I'm going okay. yeah, too I much like back in time, like a Doughboy Spider Man would also be interesting to me. Like a Pillsbury Doughboy? Is that what you're saying? No, like Gas Mask World War One. Oh, okay. I, I was think like, what? Doughboy. I don't know. I don't think they were actually called Doughboys. I don't know why. They might have been, though. I think you're somewhat right. I think that is what their helmets might have been referenced or something. I have no idea. Sure, I know what you mean, though. World oh, War One type. Yeah, they were They're called Doughboys. Do they were called Doughboys. Yeah, I forgot that. But yeah, um, right. we already have like 1776. Um, I don't think there's any reason to get into like America's history with like yeah previous wars or like, you know, Anything other than like the revolutionary one, uh, but uh, anyway, <laughs> World War One would be fine because we were the good guys in that one. So right? hey, we were the we were, good guys. Yeah. And uh, we get let's a, not actually let's not get into it. Let's not get, get into a it. Franz, Franz, uh, don't, Parker, don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Oh, I don't like it. All right, he dies. Roy. You add. The soldiers oh, to your team. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like it. We're in it. this. Franz, like it. Franz uh, Parkerland. No, That's please. Please stop. Simeon, no, it's painful. <laughs> um, Eroy Jack says, this is for uh, Groovy Ranch. Have you ever owned or thought about owning a bedazzled cowboy hat? The answer is no to both questions. I don't uh, ever want to own a bedazzled cowboy hat. I've never thought about buying one. Those aren't like real ranch people. Uh, clothes that's like city cowboy stuff slash 
appropriating Western culture with weirdos that wear bedazzled cowboy hats. Yeah. And then just to skip Luke's really quickly, he asks again in the same vein, if you were presented with a bedazzled cowboy hat, do you rock it in a Thursday throwdown? Um, I guess if it was given to me. Do like Thursday uh, throwdowns like live streamed or. Right. They're not live. But so as far as like cosplay. If it was given to me, I would probably wear it for a video. Yes. I don't think I can't guarantee I'd wear it outside ever uh walking around but i would probably wear it for one video i again these questions definitely feel like you have a bedazzled cowboy hat that you are ready to, to yeah make me wear it in a in this, i have to use some detective possible. work here uh, like i will say i i've thought about bedazzling my harness uh because one recently one of my co-workers got a new harness and instead of like the chrome like metal plating it's all like uh powder coated blue so he's got like these really fancy space like age looking metal flaps and stuff to his and i'm like "Eh, well maybe i'll just add bedazzles to mine to make my my five-year-old harness look look nice and new and fun safety hazard oh boy shimmer in the sun yeah um you finish off Luke, Luke, Luke asks, what size bed do y'all sleep in? Uh, I want to preface this by saying, I hope everybody knows, <laughs> Simi and I sleep in separate beds. Um, separate we live. states, actually. Yeah. Separate states. So I don't, the way that question was worded, though, like. What size if, bed do y'all sleep in? Y'all, yeah. yeah. I want to make this explicitly Should have been clear. What size beds, Luke? Uh, yeah, what beds. What size beds do Girl. y'all sleep in? Right. Yeah. Um. I sleep in a bed of lies, whatever uh, size that comes in. I mean, uh, maybe. Well, you yeah. know, the fib only grows the more you lie. Right. True. It's uh, Lenny's fault. He broke the plate. He hates Art Bugatti. Real, real bowling fan. Uh, and so, what is what is the reference you're making? Details? I don't fault. understand. He broke the plate. Lenny's- it's true. Uh, something, something. That's the tale I have to tell to you. Yeah, it's Veggie Tales. Veggie Tales. Okay, yeah. the fib, yeah, the, the fib. fib that grows. Fib. Yeah. yeah, Larry Boy. Larry Boy. That's the fight yeah, yeah. Okay, it was. I didn't realize that it was. I mean, I should have assumed there was a song. It's an animated show about vegetables. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's been long enough that I didn't remember. Okay, you don't remember Art Bugatti, the best bowler that I was do ever not remember on a plate. I don't remember Art Bugatti wow. whatsoever. I I know that there's like I don't even know if that's his actual name. Good, there's some good Larry Boy. There's all, they're all good actually. If you ever played the PS2 Larry Boy game, it's a bad tangent, but uh, wow. the PS2 Larry Boy game is actually super thing. good. So, dude, it's actually super good. It actually you can suction cup around Veggie Tales City say, like Spider Man on fun. the same subject as Veggie Tales. If you want a real acid trip of a TV like movie series thing. Bible Man is some wacky stuff. Oh, dude, with the lightsaber he has. Oh, oh yeah, my. I did not remember Bible that being as oh, dude as like uh, Bible Man trippy as it is. But it's there's like a a bad bad plot that gets like mixed in that you're just like, oh, wow, man. I don't remember any of this as a kid, and it's pretty crazy. So if you ever have time, and I Anyways. don't know, some like free money on Amazon or wherever it streams. Um, I will say like if I fold out my my futon, it's uh, it's like a four by six. Otherwise, it's normally just like uh, two by six. So that's the size of bed that I sleep on. Um, and before my futon, I had the box uh, that I collapsed from my, like when I didn't have my computer desk, or when I finally got my Are computer desk, I collapsed all those boxes down, and that was actually like a pretty sized. So that was like five by seven when I collapsed all those boxes. So that was the size of my bed then. But um, I upgraded to a futon recently. Goodwill had a sale. It was only $5. Uh, Does not have a cushion yet. So I'm just sleeping on the bars, but surprisingly Mm. uh, sturdy. So That's um, what I expect. That's what I figured it would be, something like that. That's good, man. Glad it uh, it fits your needs. (laughs) It's comfortable enough. Do you also have like a uh, board over thing so that way there's no rain so you don't get you know wet when you're sleeping in your, in your cardboard yeah, box. I, I, yeah whatever cardboard i'm not using to 
cushioned me, I use that as a blanket. So yeah. Oh, good call. Same good call. Thing. You know, they make that thinner cardboard that is more you know malleable for blanket wise versus yeah, thicker yeah, yeah. cardboard. For sport, so yeah. yeah, I just pile Works. all my hair on my face so that like the sun doesn't wake me up and stuff. Ah, oh, smart, smart, smart. So that's why your hair is so long. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, right so on. Those are only questions. Malcolm wants oh, that's to know. Right. Gosh. Malcolm, uh, what Forgot. what are favorite uh, or what figures we think exemplify the special uh, or not special right. the normal powers From in the PAC? So in previous episodes, we've done speed, attack, defense, and uh, we are finally up to damage. So we are on damage powers. Wow. What, what characters damage. make you think, or what do these damage powers make you think of when it comes to characters, clicks characters? Uh, and why? Those are the questions we have been asked. Okay. I like that. First up, I'm going to start with from how they appear in the pack. And I'm going to go with Ranged Combat Expert. This might not be a surprise to anyone. It's the Elseworlds Chase Green Arrow. Elseworlds Chase Green Arrow. Oh. This is the okay. one arm Hawkeye Kryptonite. Yeah. Arrow. Kryptonite, yeah. Green Arrow yep. uh, from the Dark Knight comic series yes. okay sure that makes a lot of sense to me uh i went with the joker's wild rare dead shot so i instantly Ooh, think of nice. dead shot this dead shot is the most sniper position one to me uh where he's actually got like the sniper rifle up to his eye um anyone that does like a lot of shooting makes me think of range combat expert but dead shot's the first one that comes to mind this isn't particularly a great one uh but he does have range combat expert top dial and bottom dial next up is battle fury honestly i don't think of a certain character um, i think of a certain character equipped the venom harness which is the free action you get battle fury plus one stats yeah, venom pump um then yeah the venom venom harness venom pump you get pumped up and i always gave that to the captain america uh resonant um earth x whiz kids 2017 002 doomsday so this is the one that has Ooh, a stop epic. click for all seven clicks of his dial. Um, his last four clicks are Battle Fury. Uh, but Doomsday always seems like a really angry, like, when it comes to, like, Battle Fury, like, too angry to be mind-controlled, to be to use shape change against, to incapacitate. Doomsday always, like, exemplifies that in comics to me. Uh, I think so. Because the Hulk even has like his days where he's like more calm. But Doomsday is never calm. Doomsday always angry. He is literally just alive for the sake of attacking and being angry. That's what I love about Doomsday. He exists for absolute chaos. This is support. I think about I think a doctor. Or specifically, Dr. Frankenstein. Um, Frankenstein, yeah, yeah. those of you. So yeah, Dr. Frankenstein's got free Frankenstein. support going to target characters with the monster keyword. What a guy. And when he uses it, he increases the D6 result by one. So Dr. Frankenstein for support. Okay. Well, what doctor would be um, where he's at without a strong woman behind him? So I've got a good old Linda Carter from the oh. Civil War organized play LEs, the Night Nurse. So, is her name Linda Carter? Yeah. Linda is Carter. It really? Easton oh. Registration, Marvel Knights. Not, yeah. Did not know that. That's funny. Good old Night Nurse. Um, she has huh. support with a 11 attack, 16 defend. So she can defend that 16, use her 11 attack to only need a 5 to support people. Um, no other special stuff, but she is only 20 points. So one of my favorite medics in the game i think oh, anyone okay. that's played her has you know played this medic at this at some point there was another night nurse earlier but this one's somehow cheaper and somehow better so much better uh next up is exploit weakness and this is a an older cut but the deadpool 057 tiamat i go to for exploit weakness she's got a big 12 attack five damage charge strength exploit weakness uh He's going to exploit his first four clicks of his life. Did this whole thing where uh, when an opposing character takes damage from his attack, give team it an action token. It's a free action. When you do, after actions resolve, remove an action token from team it. So you give him any action as a free action, and then you remove an action token from him. Yeah. Uh, also, team it would be just a solid legacy card figure with the power cosmic team oh, ability. Yeah, yeah. 
scope. Wow. He's a little, a little cheaper. But he's super rare, yeah. Yeah. I remember him like, just boy. kind of rolling tables back in the day. Oh, dude, he used to, though. He really yeah. did. Like, wait, you, you run up there, you charge up, or even they perplex him up, and then he can uh, move an attack with Dolphin Symbol. So he'd only be a 10 attack, but you could perplex him up or something. And he's got a 10 speed. Then you charge up, smack someone for five. Reaction. If he damages them, that's what the exploit is good for. Damage them. Hit him again. And then remove a token. Are you kidding me? And then he's all up in your face. He's got nine clicks of life. Yeah. Arge for a ton of it. Yeah, he's great. I love him. He's my, he's my dude. <laughs> all right. Uh, when I think exploit weakness, there's only one comic character that like really comes to mind. The, the dude whose whole power set is to find the weakness and exploit it. And uh, that is Karnak from the Inhumans. So like that's his whole his whole inhuman ability is exploiting weaknesses. So I went with the best and only Karnak that has top dial exploit and also like an ability to hit pretty well. And that is the Fast Forces Guardians of the Galaxy Karnak. Ooh, okay. So for 100 points, he's got charge and flurry, 9 speed, 11 attack with precision strike, 18 defense with super senses, and exploit weakness. Uh, he drops down to sidestep and power. He gets his uh, special speed power charge flurry again on click 4. But uh, no, for 100 points, he doesn't quite hold up. I mean, no. It'd be a far shot to say that he holds up for 100 points. Yeah. But on Inhumans or martial artist theme teams, he's still a pretty solid option in like you know friendly casual games, and I think he's the best version of Karnak that we've seen, which is sad because, uh, man, I in the comics I really think this guy's pretty interesting, and then the Hero Clicks version is always just kind of lackluster. Uh, he's, they just make him like a normal martial artist dude most of the time. Yeah, but bit of like. Yeah, they make him like a bad Shang Chi dial instead Basically, of like Karnak yeah, he's just like a dial, you know, martial artist. And I'm like, no, this dude literally, he can find like the flaw yeah. in like an entire governmental system or like exactly. an entire like giant robot armada or whatever. Like your super annoying drunk uncle at Thanksgiving. Well, here's yeah. what's wrong with your degree. I'm like, all right, I didn't ask for your opinion, Larry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is exactly. what'll crack that facade you have that's protecting you. <laughs> you thought you were safe, but old Uncle Karnak's gonna Karnak. punch a hole right through your uh, geez. dreams. All right, <laughs> all right. Next up is enhancement. I chose the best dude who could ever enhance, and that is Weasel from the Deadpool set. Deadpool set just a good set. Weasel gets he has enhancement. And once choice, per turn yeah. when he does, you also modify the attacking characters attack and range values by plus one. What a what a dude. Weasel's great. Need more weasel. That's my choice for enhancement. Damien. I went with the Ellie Skeets. So Skeet. if you played in twenty seventeen or till uh from twenty seventeen to like twenty nineteen, you probably saw this guy at least once, I would think. For 35 points, he had the PD team ability. He was tiny size, had enhancement on dial. He had a special speed power that was adjacent friendly characters modify their attack plus one. If that character was named Booster Gold, you modified his attack by plus two instead. Um, he had a different power or point line where you could play him at 115 and he would get oh. a monster keyword and turn into like a crazy whatever when he crossed the 1KO line. But uh, for 35 points... PD, plus one attack, plus one damage for range, tiny size so you could carry him, uh, ESD, so he was a 19 from range, four, uh, four range, two lightning bolts with in cap. Like, he, w he was pretty solid. I mostly just okay. carried him around with, like, uh, the ADW Hawkeye to do uh, plus one attack and just, like, you know, PD and just keep, like, blasting people over and over again. But he was a pretty solid enhancement piece. As far as enhancement pieces go, L. Skeet Davidson here. He's uh, he's pretty tough to take out. Yeah. One fifteen. Uh, next up is probability control. I always go back to my girl, my favorite Avengers prob in the universe, and that is from the Avengers set. That's right, one of the f the first ever carded hero Clock set. Zero fifty seven, Scarlet Witch. Very basic. Little uh, little flight. Little eight range. Little thirty five point. Little uh, three clicks of prob. Three clicks of barrier. Five clicks of life. Okay. Lover. Yeah. Go to prob. Awesome. I went with a similar kind of situation. Uh, just the cheapest prop that I could think of. 
uh, the Destiny from the expansion oh, yeah. set or the Legacy card of the same figure. So 20 points, prop control, uh, super senses. The Legacy card has a special trait that is uh, when she's targeted with attack, she can replace her defense value with the printed defense value of an adjacent friendly character that shares a keyword with her. So they don't need to have defend. She can just copy that defense value. And then she has another trait that is make a range attack within with a range of four and attack value of nine instead of normal damage, deal one penetrating damage. And that's awesome because her normal Ooh. damage is zero. <laughs> uh, and her normal attack value is zero. <laughs> so oh, that's very good. Then. That that's very useful. Actually, uh, you know, adds two whole stats to her dial an attack stat and a damage stat. So isn't that cool? Um, but no, as far as just like pure prob, not only in comics does Destiny make sense for like quite literally uh, controlling the probability of things. Right, Destiny. Um, but then, yeah, <laughs> the destiny of people and things. Uh, but then also, yeah, just as far as hero clicks go, it's a cheap prob. That's the only reason you play this figure. You're not playing her because she can do one pen damage. I mean, maybe you do that. I don't know why, but maybe. Uh, but you're playing her because she got prob. No, definitely. Bob, in the game, ladies and gents. Next up is Shape Change. I think of my boy. There's there's no one else, but it's the Fantastic Four. Super rare. 58, Super Scroll. Super Scroll. He's the, bro, Homeboy's the king of Shape Change. He's got Shape Change printed on his top click of each dial at 175 and 50. He's got that Scroll Steam ability at plus one to Shape Change roll. He's the go to Shape Change. That's my go. Who's your, who's your Shape Change pick, Simi? My so I instantly think of for whatever reason I think of the symbiote characters and when I okay. think of those I don't play a lot of like symbiotes carnage venom that kind of thing, uh, but there was one character that I played a absolute ton of and that's the Fantastic Four Super Rare Zero Fifty Five Agent Venom who not only does he have his own shape change, uh, but his is a special traded plasticity shape change because the symbiote and then his special damage power is adjacent friendly characters can use shape change. So for 75 points, um, I think his lower dial starts on like click three or something. So he doesn't get that power right away. But uh, for 75 points, adjacent friendly characters also get shape change. I'm a huge fan of just passing that out to everyone adjacent. Uh, Fantastic Four is already good when it comes to defense, and this guy just made him really good. Uh, right. Also, it's it's Flash Thompson, which happens to be my personal favorite version of Venom. Not a huge fan of like Eddie Brock, and not like a huge fan of like the symbiote people in general. To be honest, I just never really I don't know. Cassidy is fine as far as like villains go, but most of the time, like Venom's just like seemed to really like forced narratives, and Flash Thompson was actually like a good narrative to me. I enjoyed Flash Thompson a ton as Venom. So I, uh, I'll be with that camp there that says Flash Thompson is my favorite Venom character. You know, I was disappointed when they didn't age up MCU Flash Thompson and then make him yeah. whatever. Agent Venom, that would have been such a, a great thing to do, but no, yeah, alas, like, nope. Shoved, shoved MCU uh, Flash in a, some boot camp well, like during the snap or something. Yeah, that would have been awesome, but alas, no. Um, I, what's the next one? Close Combat Expert. All right, so this one's another sort of pseudo pick. This character doesn't have Close Combat Expert until way later in their dial. But the way I played them was I always gave them the Boxing Glove Construct, which gives you Close Combat Expert. Uh, that's right, I'm talking about the War of Light 104 LE Guy Gardner Green Lantern. I don't know what Construct was. It was this extra thing you could pay its points for. And then eventually you could do like a terrible power action to swap it out or a free action if it was less points. But it was Green Lantern slash Lantern core thing. You could have a construct on there. Uh, so Guy Gardner is 120 points. But his cool thing is his get in your face speed power. He can use charge. Give Guy Gardner a move action. And if he ends his move adjacent to an opposing character, the move action counts as a free action instead. And he uses Battle Fury until that character is KO'd. I loved this. You could TK him up, and then you can move him a full nine squares. And then because it was a free action, this is back when Close Combat Expert was a power action to pull off, you could be a 12 for four. Now you're an 11 for five, which is still great with Close Combat Expert. I still love it, um, especially with Battle Fury, once you land next to that character. And in fact, 
all the lanterns, since they have willpower instead of indom, like willpower on dial, is actually so much better now, post-rules change. So maybe uh, worth picking up and looking at if you ever play with any of these guys. But yeah, so this guy, Yardner, is my close combat expert pick with the boxing glove construct. For close combat expert, I didn't think of like some bowl cutted uh, space guy. I thought of like someone who was good at close combat expert. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you're a jerk. Just kidding. Uh, no, so I went with uh, from a similar set that Calder's been calling out a few times from the okay. Deadpool set. The, Ooh. The rare Shang-Chi. Uh, so he has, as a special attack power, close combat expert and uh. precision strike. Crazy, I know. Uh, the guy. But no, he has, he has counter block traded. So each time an opposing character targets and misses Shang-Chi with an attack, put a counter token on this card, give him a free action, remove all counter tokens, and make that many close combat attacks with a locked damage value of two. At the end of your turn, remove all counter tokens. This is actually somehow better now because it combos with close combat expert and precision strike. I don't, I think it comboed with precision strike before but he's now a 13 attack for his first three clicks and a 12 attack on his fourth click so um when he uses this counter block he has a you know he's got a 20 defense from close it's potential that he'll get a couple of these locked in and then uh go to town but a 13 for basically just a bunch of ones you know precision striking through stuff um yeah you know death by a thousand cuts kind of thing uh, this Shang Chi's cool. I've always liked this one. Uh, he is ninety points, so he's a little bit expensive. But you know, when I when I think of experts in the close combat field, it's usually <sighs> lends myself to Marvel. I could have like gone with like Batman. There's, I mean, there's a lot of people yeah. that are good at close combat. Um, yeah, Shang Chi. That was just, like, just the too. first one I thought of. That makes sense. I would say he's definitely in my top four, like Shang Chi's of all time. Yeah, he's really. I would say really I put him, um, yeah, probably in like the top of all time that have been made. Yeah, I would say so. Top Shang Chi's. Yeah. Um. Next up is Empower. This is the first character that came to my mind, and that was the XXS zero fifty five Super Old Man Logan. He has oh. a damage power Mentor the Young. It's yeah, Empower. That's an awesome damage power. Yeah, and then adjacent friendly characters have less points can use combat reflexes. Already they can. can. They modify yeah. their defense by plus one instead, an overall yeah. plus one. So, I, yeah, I love this old I man. I tried Logan. building a He's bunch of teams figure. around that specific power. Yeah, right? So I did a, an X-Jet team. I think it was actually... It might have been X-Men. Yeah, I think it built in... It wasn't actually X-Men, no, because it was a bunch of Batrock the Leapers. So they, they all, all the Batrocks also had in power with, I think, Precision Strike, and they all had combat reflexes. So he gave them all just a static plus one. And then I also played a team one time with him, which was an X Men team. It had the Ben Crawler, so it would give. No wait, no, he was eighty six. I don't know what I was thinking when I built that team. He didn't get combat reflexes, but anyways, it was still fun. He's he's dope. Old Man Logan here is an awesome, awesome character. Yeah. Who's your empower pick? Uh, I didn't go with a good option like that. So when I thought of empower, <laughs> I thought of like mob. Okay. And so, oh, sure. like, a mob of people. So I, I went with, like, mob rule from the gravity feed of the Flash set. And then I was like, that's way too many points to be, like, a mob. Like, at most, you're going to play, like, two. Uh, but then I was like, you know, I know I know some, like, terrifying mob mentality type figures that might have Empower. So I went with the Friends of Humanity. Because hey. they've, got, they've got one click of Empower. Uh, it happens to be a flurry in power click, but yeah, when I, I don't think of like cap or like, those seems like enhancement pieces whenever I think of like a friendly For character sure. boosting, because normally like when you're close in the fray, you're all like bunched up and crazy. Uh, another good option would have been like the DDs from Batman, the animated series. But my first thought was friends of humanity because you can have like a big yeah, mob of these guys. You stack a bunch of them. Yeah, you stack a bunch of these guys together and you know, suddenly they're dealing like four damage because you know, mob mentality, friends of humanity, crazy people kind right. of thing going on. You know, they right. all it's pretty boost awesome. each other for whatever reason. I don't know what the like the I wonder what the, the flavor what text called. on these guys yeah. is. It's probably called like Go home, muties or something. This beauty, uh, or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I pat my brothers on the back. 
you, yeah. you butt oh, heads. No. Something like that. Butt heads. Uh, I don't know. All right. But yeah, that's that's so, my only thought for for Empower. Next up There's is, definitely better options. I, and I think there was a time in the game when you thought Perplex out of no one else, Anthony Delfini, <laughs> a.k.a. Big, Big Tony. Tony. Yeah. That's right. That was my first and, thought. Right? Yeah, dude. Big Tony. The biggest the Perplex. Tony. Large Anthony here. Yeah, man. He's a fun little guy and his name of his special Tony damage power Cannon. is perplex he can only target adjacent friendly characters and it's come on hug will make us feel better what a, what a dude i remember making Tony. multiple tony cannons happen oh yeah dude people i think if you're around during the harley quinn set when that came out i think a lot of people had multiple big tonys um and it is natural to have several big yeah. tonys like yeah i remember several people confusing him for a generic because I, I oh I yeah right yeah people, like a few times because uh totally we'd be like counting up generics and I'd be like oh you're like big Tony and then I'd be like oh wait you know anytime you do like a uh, you'd have like a build where it was like um Highlander rule unless their real name was like Various or something you'd be like oh I'll just right, play yeah. like a couple big Tonys and then you're like oh wait that's an actual person <laughs> he's just cheaper than most generics yeah. The Tony Cannon was awesome too because you could back in the it's day so increase damage, so you could be like plus three range, plus three attack, plus three damage, all with like you know some side steps and perplexes going on, and then you have one big Tony who's like all of a sudden a big Tony Cannon, uh, and it was a scary yeah. sight to behold. Um, I went with the so a potential ooh ah a potential ooh. legacy card. Who knows? Okay. The okay. Slosh 037A, the Riddler. Some people have thought oh. it's this one. I personally think it's the Joker's Wild one, but uh, they did announce a potential Riddler legacy card. So this is the one that has Riddle Me This Batman as a trait, and that is the Riddler can use Perplex regardless of range and line of fire, but can only target Stop. opposing characters. Such a boring Riddler compared to the Joker's Wild one. But he's got a really cool sculpt and map wide perplex. I've I love playing this guy. Um, the prime is also fun. The Edward Nigma, um, oh, fun yeah. for different reasons. But this one I always thought was really fun because not only can you like lower defense, attack, speed, but like you can lower like range, and you don't need any line of fire. You don't need range. You don't need like any of that stuff. You just mess with opposing characters before they're even close to you. So. For 55 points, I always thought this was like a fun perplex piece. It's a uh, traded perplex, and it's only for opposing characters. So it's not, it's like kind of like the opposite of Big Tony. Not only is it not adjacent, it's not for friends. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, X damage power is outwit. Um, I can safely say every time I think of outwit as a power, despite the fact it doesn't seem like there's that many that are specifically really good at outwitting necessarily, I do always think of Batman. When we talk about outwit as a power, um, I did not choose a Bruce Wayne Batman though. I chose Elseworlds 014 Uncommon Batman, who is Dick Grayson. I like this Batman for a lot of reasons. He just has one single click of outwit with some sidestep. He's a very simple, maybe overcosted Batman dial, but his his fun thing is non outwit related. It's when he would be KO'd. You may instead KO another friendly character of 25 points or more, and then you turn Batman here to click one, so he can go back to his outwit, which is kind of nice. But um, there was a time when I was being a jerk, and this is, yeah, <laughs> totally past, uh, where if you played two of these, you could just keep KOing them because they both had the trait. Batman would be KO'd. Instead, you KO another friendly character with point value, 25 points or more, and you turn Batman to click one, and they would make the other one be KO'd. Um, so then you would just do the same thing infinitely until time was over because um, they would just keep KOing each other, not actually beautiful, you know, not actually get scored. Fun. I just get scored. Yep. So fun. It's a fun time. <laughs> Sounds pretty yeah. fun. That's my outwit pick. All right. Uh, for my outwit pick, um, because the, the one Sherlock-esque kind of character we have actually has prob instead of outwit, I went with uh, Sherlock's uh, arch enemy. Um, Ooh. So from Ooh. Star Trek to Bold to Go, the super rare Professor Moriarty. Uh, so James Moriarty, real name, keywords are holodeck past scientist he's a robot he's a he's a holodeck he's a hologram come to life he's not a real person um 
But no, his special outwit is uh, it's better than normal outwit because it's overriding command control. So he has outwit perplex when he uses either to target an opposing character until your next turn. The target can't use team abilities, and Professor Moriarty can't use any team abilities. The target or can use any team abilities. The target can't use through this effect. So you could perplex down somebody with cosmic energy or uh, power cosmic or quintessence or the Q continuum, all of the protected outwit ones. You perplex them down, boom, they can't use team abilities. Professor Moriarty gets that, and then you outwit them. Great, 50 points, really solid, super outwit perplex piece. Um, And then he had like a wonky, worse version of the danger room constructs where he had the safety protocol tokens. Uh, So... When he had a safety protocol token, opposing characters took a max of one damage from his attacks, and then when he used Outwit after resolutions, he removed a safety protocol token. But at no point does it say he takes a max of one damage from attacks, which a lot of people thought, because the Danger Room constructs came out before him, that he also took one damage. No, he just only deals one for okay. for whatever reason. It was sad. But good Outwitter. Yeah. All right. And then the last one is Leadership to no one i chose captain america 75, 72 points from hammer of thor gotta go with the hammer of thor pick he just has standard leadership on dial there's a lot of captain americas that can do a mass leadership succeed if they power action leadership or if they roll a d6 or um, give themselves an action token there's all sorts of really fun leader versions of captain america this one normal leadership but just classic uh classic hammer of thor captain america that's my pick in from the X of Swords organized play kit, I don't know if you noticed this, uh-huh. but the rare Wolverine actually has leadership on three of his clicks, making him probably one of the uh, best leaders in hero clicks. So, no, uh, <laughs> I went with the the uh, Earth X, the original Earth X con LE that we got. Um, the 65 point Captain America is probably the best leadership figure I've ever played. I built so many teams with bystander generation built around him because his leadership is uh, you can use leadership and it can't be re-rolled when he succeeds. Instead, remove an action token from up to 150 points of other friendly characters, regardless of adjacency or point value. So bystanders count for zero points of your build total. Like they, they just count for zero points in most circumstances. So if you had like 30 bystanders on the map for some reason and you hit this leadership they suddenly all remove action tokens because it's regardless of adjacency or point value and it's up to 150 total points so yeah you just gotta remove a ton of points with this guy or a ton of action tokens because of like the point values with this guy and uh, because of that he's probably the leadership team or leadership figure that I built around the most I don't think I've ever built around a specific leadership more than this one. Um, even like Blackheart or somebody that like generates something when they hit leadership. I think I built around this guy's leadership more often than any of the other. Okay. Ones. Okay. John. Even if he did kill a kid. And that, ooh, stop. <laughs> off. <laughs> ah. The skull was innocent. That's all. I, I he was so not. No, he was he maybe was like the worst character in that entire. I think yes. I think I will. Yeah. No. He was terrible. He's a horrible human being. He was an awful kid. Terrible kid. Yeah, sure. But awful. Like literal times against humanity. He's caused several. All right. That is. Uh, that's all the questions. I'm gonna shout out really quickly to all our top Patreons, those in the $15 and $25 tier, Darth Jono, 22 Ethan Jacobs, Matt Reed, Alex Morse, and Chance McCall. Thank you guys so much for supporting everything we do here over at Dial H for Hero Clicks, helping out with audio, sound quality, editing for the podcast, being quality, and all, all around awesome stuff we do on the YouTube channel. So thank you for supporting that. If you guys, anyone listening, wants to support the podcast and also get your name read out every week on the Patreon sorry, support the podcast and donate to the Patreon. Get your name read out every week on the podcast. You can do so. Patreon.com slash dial your hero clicks. Check us out. Considering supporting, we give out awesome action tokens, awesome stickers, all sorts of really cool stuff. Did not do a giveaway last month because of the big thousand subscriber giveaway stuff, which is going to be sent out. Like Simeon said at the top of the show, it's getting there, Uh, but we'll be doing a giveaway in August. 
a kind of pre-worlds giveaway. Ooh, ah, fun, fun, fun. So stay tuned for all that information. Consider following the podcast on Podbean, iTunes, all this good stuff. Pop us a follow, pop us a like, and then leave us a review. The reviews super help get the podcast recommended around. So if you want there to be more like-minded, cool, and like good-looking, dialish listeners like yourself, then write a review for the podcast. It helps more people see it, helps us pop up first when people type in HeroClix Podcasts, all that jazz. Please consider doing so. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out all the fun videos we have on YouTube. If you want to ask us questions like a lot of these folks did, you can do so by just sending us a message on Twitter or Facebook. Twitter is DialH4. That's the number four HeroClix, twitter.com. And then Facebook is just DialH for HeroClix, all spelled out on Facebook. Give us a like. Send us a message if you have any questions for the show. Or send us an email at dialh for heroclicks at gmail.com. That's all I got. Speaking of all that jazz, all that fun stuff, imagine Jaspers. Oh, baby. He's $140 on Cool Stuff, Inc. Oof. Uh, Believe it, though. A, that's a hard Jim Jaspers pill to swallow. I believe but, it. Uh, I don't doubt he's not worth it because, I mean, uh, that's he's probably worth that for a little while at least. Um, no, Cool Stuff finally got their singles up for X of Swords. They've got all the tarot cards up, all of the Danger Room constructs up, all the rares, all the equipment, uh, even like the starter stuff's up. Even though most of the singles from the starter set are sold out, I think you can still get you can still get the starter the actual or by starter I mean uh, the miniatures game. Uh, you can still get the miniatures game for sixty bucks from them, which is weird okay. because if you were collecting like multiples of like you know or not multiples but if you're picking up like Cable and Iska and like the single figures, it was almost cheaper to just pick up the miniatures game itself oh um, yikes all but right. yeah uh you know they got all the chases up uh they're only sold out of a few things currently so they're sold out of the legacy apocalypse card they're sold out of some of the uh miniatures game figures as i said earlier um they're sold out of some of the tarot cards a few of the tarot cards which the ones that they're sold out of kind of odd to me just kind of like random yeah. whichever I think it's mostly people going on like artwork stuff. Um, and then like they're, they're sold out of the object and terrain token pack from, Oh really? From the what? Game. Why, why people buying the object tokens and terrain packs? Uh, huh. it does have the PAC. Huh. So maybe that's why, uh, the PAC attached to it. Uh, they have Probably over it. 12 peepers available for those of you wanting oh. to really bank on peepers. Oh, potential. Um, Disgusting. Yeah, they're out of the just the pyro. You can still get the play at home kit, but just the pyro by himself with flame marker not attached slash attached. Um, they're sold out of that. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, the bystander scenario packs also sold out, but uh, all the danger room dudes, most of the legacy cards, almost all of the tarot cards from the main set. Um, yeah, and then almost all the figures from the main set still available. So pretty decent prices on most of it. Obviously, some of the higher rarity stuff is at like those higher point prices. But uh, the, like the, I was pleasantly surprised with how low the generics were. So yeah, Better. check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how would six uh, people humor? think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools? It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. That's true.